<laughs> and we're back. Oh. Hi. Yeah, we're we're live now. So everybody, uh, this is this is me. This, this is, is me. this is this is me. This is Shiori Ideta, <laughs> one of the co-stars of uh, Man from Reno. And uh, I just sent an invite out to Lin Chen, who will hopefully join us soon. Um, How do we do that? She's gonna she's gonna come in like on another window. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, everybody, just doing a little bit of housekeeping. Eight five eight. What was that? 658 right? 7151. 7151. I think I see Lynn coming on. Here she comes. Lynn, is that you? Oh, there I am. Hey, how are you doing? In my pajamas. <laughs> oh, awesome. Five thousand dollars away? Is this is this true? It is I, thought, true. I thought it was like a prank or something. What what happened since Tuesday? Um it, it Today was. someone came on board as an executive producer. Amazing. Congratulations. Um, we got. We also have Pepe on the line. It's a. It's a full. We got a full oh party God. going on here. Yeah. Here, I'm, we we got a full house. Uh, Pepe, we're here with Shiori, who plays uh, the oh, uh, yeah. yeah. in my pajamas. Uh oh, I can hear myself. Oh, awesome. yeah, I, think, I think you have to. Uh, Closing windows. Closing yeah. windows. There you go. Um. I was calling in between. I've been watching. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. It's great. Really incredible. Oh, it's been, uh, it's, it's been really, really fun. We're, we're on, we got Lynn coming in from the other side, well, not really the other side of town, in from, uh, you know, on the yeah, on Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm losing yeah. my mind. I, I, I kind of wanted to call you in between. Because I know we got a full lineup, so I was just excited. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't watch it for about, it seemed like about an hour. I was doing some stuff, and then I came on. I said, "What? Is this a typo?" <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna try to get in touch with uh, our new executive producer backer on Kickstarter, and um, we should send him a message see if he wants to. Say hi. I don't. I don't know if you. Tell him he's welcome to call. Or yeah, right. You're you're welcome to call. I, I don't. You know, I want to respect uh, privacy and all that. Yeah. So yeah, but. Uh, what, what, what time is a good time for you guys? Um, maybe like in another hour would be would be good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, all right. Hey, thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping everybody on their oh, toes yeah. in the comments. That's awesome. Oh, it's exciting. It's really exciting. Okay, I'll let you go. Thanks for gonna... spreading the word, Pepe. Yeah, thanks so Thank much. Bye-bye. All righty, we'll talk all to you right. soon. Talk to you later. Bye. And with all the call-in guests, uh, we're just about out of battery on the old uh, uh, Kickstarter oh, phone. Oh, my God. Thanks. So, Lynn. Hi. Uh, before we get too far into it, I'm going to very quickly... We, uh, what we're doing here? <laughs> but just doing a little bit of a little bit Twitter of Twitter maintenance. Twitter maintenance. Hello. Okay. Gabe is telling me I should put on my headphones. Gabe? Yeah, cause um, cause he, he's he's experienced with with Google Chat. He thinks that it'll improve sound quality. Ah. Have other people been doing that? Nope. <laughs> but Abe, uh, I, I'd say he knows what he's doing uh, much more than I would. I'm just kind of 
If I if I sound start sounding weird, and if someone would write a comment, you sound weird. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Hi. You missed all the excitement. I know. It sounds exciting. This, this is the excitement. Well, you had Chung Hu Chung, who's like the VP of Old Boy, dropped in as a surprise. That's amazing. Yeah, he had and, Albert and you know the what? Cat. You know what? He told he told Rich <laughs> over the air that he thought it looked amazing and that uh, and that Rich is doing better work than him. Whoa! So he got his endorsement. He like endorsed the movie on air. It was really cool. And then we had Albert the cat come on live. Albert the cat? Who's Albert the cat? Oh wait, you're not a cat person, sorry. No, who's is he? A famous cat? Yeah, yeah. You'll have to go like back. Like Grumpy Cat. Famous? Not, not that famous, but he, he he might be one day. He's getting there. Yeah. He's a rising star. Let's mm -hmm. just put it that way. Okay. Oh, we should put Julius on. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's bring he in. really wants to be an internet star. Yeah, animals are always big hits. <laughs> How's it been going? How else is it going? Oh. Yeah, he's pulling out all the stops. He's he knows he's on camera. <laughs> oh, he he's live. Thanks, Julius. Thank thank you, dog. What a good dog. Hey, can, um, you, can you want to make sure it's cutting back and forth? I'm not sure. Is it is it playing back so I put on the headphones? No, 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 no. I just wanted to make sure that um I just wanted to make sure that the uh that the uh. Broadcast. We just started a new live stream and wanted to make sure that everything is hunky dory. I don't really know how to work this thing, <laughs> so I'm like a little bit at a loss on how to how to operate a, a Google. Okay. But Phil says hi to Lynn. Oh, Phil Lorenzo says hi, Lynn. Hi, Phil Lorenzo. And we haven't officially met yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Shiori, hi. This is this is Lin Chen. Lin, this is Shiori Yudita. Shiori. Uh, so Lin. This is Julia. Oh. Hi. Lin has starred in um, in three of my films, and we work together on a on a fourth film. And Shiori plays a key role in Man from Reno. Cool. I can't I can't wait to see it and to see you. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't wait for you to see it too. I'm, I'm excited to have it done. And thanks to everybody out there who's been pushing this Kickstarter thing so hard for me. It's uh, it's really, man. Can't thank everybody enough. That's for sure. Dave, I thought of you tonight because I I just went to go see In a World with Joy Osmanski. Uh huh. And afterwards we went and had dinner. And at the end of the meal there was a chocolate chip cookie. And it was a near spiritual experience. Was it? You, you described it was a very good chocolate chip cookie, but the thing is, they gave us three tiny forks to eat it with, like lobster forks, <laughs> you know, yeah. like like that. You and uh, and when I when I cut into the cookie, it was very soft and gooey. Wow. And it was quite nice. I only had a bite, but it was it was enough. It was that's, enough. Okay. Well, uh, that's. Sounds like a must go for for me. Uh, Lynn and I had a, a long talk about cookies and other foods the other day on her podcast on the actor's diet, and uh, I described cookies as being a borderline spiritual experience. And I stand by that statement. I understand. I completely understand. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, how, how are things going? How are things going with you right now? I'm just fine. I'm in my pajamas with my dog. I saw a good movie. I had a great meal, you know. And I'm very happy that your uh, that your Kickstarter's doing doing so well. I'm oh, hoping great. That when I wake up in the morning. Wait. So if you if you reach the goal, are you gonna you're gonna keep going with the 24 hour thing, right? Uh. Are you gonna go to sleep? I have to, yeah. I mean, it's going to take me, I mean, I spent a half an hour reading backer names and giving thanks, and 
and uh, I only got through like backer number twenty, maybe. So I I'm happy to I'm happy to take this all the way. I mean, I feel contractually obliged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're contractually obliged. So. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Trying to something wrong with my. These are happening on my screen. I don't know about your screen. There we go. Okay. That's good. Um, this is the latest I've been up in a long time. I feel like. What? I don't. I don't stay up late. Oh really? Are you, you're more of a morning person. No. <laughs> I don't really stay up very late, and I don't really get up that early. You don't. You don't feel the need I don't to. Sleep all the time, though. I just. I'm sort of like in. You know, I'm just sort of in my bed, silent, mm. for a long period of time before bed, and then when I first wake up. It's not like I sleep the whole time either. <laughs> like a seven to eight hour kind of person, but for a good two hours before bed and a good two hours after after waking, I'm like just silent. This is a this is a, my dog doesn't know what to make of it. All right, we're gonna we should we should take a night pretty soon, but hey, thanks so much for stopping in. This should be a little bit of a Julia show. Aw, Julius. What an adorable dog. He's so shy. Wait, I can't believe. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh man, me neither. Uh, well, well, I, I hope that when I pop on tomorrow morning that I'll see all is well and you can just be like juggling or something like that. Yeah, you know, I was going to try to get Perry on to uh, teach me how to juggle. Oh, does Perry Shen know how to juggle? He does. He taught mm -hmm. himself from YouTube videos, apparently. Whoa. Yep. Is there anything that guy can't do? Uh, I don't think so. He's, He's very talented. Ripping it up on General Hospital, that's for yeah. sure. Well, man, thanks so much for calling in, Lynn. Appreciate it. Oh. Of course. It was fun. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. <laughs> Bye, <Liz. laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, that was my hero, Lin Chen. Thank you so much for calling in. Um, it looks like I, I, I want to give a, a shout out to my friend. Uh, Mari Ishida, who's been watching the broadcast and also been sending. Oh no. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Oh, Gary, Gary has to get on a plane again and go back to Incheon. Poor guy. Totally unrelated. Sorry. <laughs> I'm losing it, guys. You're going to see me lose it tonight, I promise. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my good friend Mari Ishida in New York City. Mari san, thank you so much. Um, she, uh, oh, awesome. Her friend Miyawaki san just donated to Kickstarter. He, and he, he's uh, a director, Miyamoto Kantoku, um, a mutual friend of ours, uh, his, her, her assistant. And so, man, so. Japanese film industry folk throwing down some cold hard cash. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。これからもよろしくお願いします。本当にありがとうございます。本当にありがとうございます。本気で本気で。侍みたい。Really? <笑> That's because I'm paranoid about my voice sounding like a girl when I speak Japanese, so I no. artificially speak lower. I watched your clip. Oh, you did? Yeah, you and your um, 
Hiroshi? Hiroshi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't recognize you. I was like, I'm just speaking. Well, you're Japanese, and it's. <laughs> that's uh, that's what happens when you get old you're, and fat. Your hair is like, <laughs> yeah. so funny. Yeah, that was that was me. So I liked it. I'm I'm firmly planted behind the camera now. But if anybody wants to hire me for an acting gig, I'll take it. Side on theme. <laughs> you doing the pointing okay. thing? Yeah. Interesting. It doesn't. Yeah, try to try to point to the Kickstarter thing. It's hard, not easy. Oh, Phil! <laughs> Phil Lorenzo has a message for you that you seem pretty awesome, and he hopes to see more films with you. And... <laughs> Japanese, I'm, like, I <laughs> I'm not like yay kind of person. I'm more like thank you very much. No, I. That's, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, there's there's room for all forms of there's room for all forms of thanks in this in this neighborhood. Shall we shall we say thank you to a, a couple more of our backers while we're both on the air? Let's see here. Opening up the who did I? Who did I? Who did I who, oh, okay, okay. I think, I think I know what I'm doing here. Sorry, everybody. I'm just uh. Oh, wow, so you can see people's names. Yeah. Um, I think I got to... Boy. Sorry, guys. I'm just going through... Oh. I want to give a, a shout-out to Miki Sekine. Sekine-san, arigatouzaimashita. Sekine-san, arigatouzaimashita. And also to Mr. Sagai Hiroshi-san. Sagai-san, thank you very much. 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 Partner in crime, Mai Hong, is also a backer on here. Give it a pause. I love you. All right. Next, uh, Maruyama Yomi san. Maruyama san, arigato gozaimashita. Maruyama san, arigato gozaimashita. Arigato gozaimashita. Honto ni. Wow, thank you so much. And so backer. Yep. So we're gonna, we're gonna thank every single last one, or at least so I am. Nice. You'll probably have to go home and sleep so you can go to work. <laughs> Backer number thirty-two is Mr. Patrick Wang. Patrick, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of Patrick's work. If anybody hasn't seen his film in the family, it is one of the most extraordinary films to come out in the past couple of years, yeah. and uh, it was. Uh, in, through a, sort of a twist of fate that I was able to see it early on when it um, when it played at the San Diego Asian Film Festival and and it's really it's it's grown since then. Uh, Patrick. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he's been on he's been on the broadcast a couple times and yeah, man, Patrick is not only a, a brilliant and talented filmmaker, but he's also one of the best public speakers I've ever heard in my life. I mean. He's a, yeah, talented, talented guy in the family. Definitely worth checking out. Thanks, Patrick. Whoa, backer number 33, James Shi. Thank you so James much, James. Shi. Thank you so much. Thank you. I ran into I ran into James at the uh, in Dallas a couple of weeks right when we were starting this whole thing about Bob. Backer number 34 is Matt Boyle. That's my uncle Matt. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Uncle Matt, thanks so much for throwing down cold hard cash. You, you don't you don't even laugh when I say it anymore. Yay! <laughs> Here's my cold hard cash sound effect. This is gonna be the name for your next movie. Cold hard cash. Cold hard cash. Oh, it's very catchy. Uh, next is uh, Emory Bishie-san. 
エモリさん。エモリさん、本当にありがとうございました。これからもよろしくお願いします。お願いします Uh, backer number 36, Tom Trong. Thanks so much for the, for the Twitter shout out and, the, and everything, Tom. Thank sure do appreciate it. Next, number, backer number 37 is Izumi Tani Akiko san. Izumi Tani Akiko san. Akiko san, どうもありがとうございます。よろしくお願いします。一生懸命良い作品となりますように頑張ります。頑張りますよね、僕たち。頑張る、頑張ります。Okay. Okay. And, Next is、uh, Miki Takasan. Miki Takasan.、Uh, I wonder, who, who do you got from? Miki is Miyoji. Miyoji, yes. Miki san, Domo, Arigato Gozaimas. Arigato Gozaimas, Miki san. Korekara mo yoroshi kore shimas. Ano, eh, to, deki agatara, o kimi te kuetara, zugoku u r e s h i m e s Number 39 is my man, George Q. Wynn. I gotta bring back、George、the sound effects. <laughs> Actor,、uh, supporter of the arts, all around great guy. I love, I love seeing George. I've seen him on the, on the set of so many movies now in all sorts of aspects, whether he's acting or、mm-hmm. taking stills or anything like that. Talented, generous guy. Thank you so much, dude. Much appreciated. Number 40, L.A. Renegan. L.A. L.A. Renegan. Thank you so much. Thanks for,、uh, oops, wrong window. Thanks, thanks so much for, for pledging. LA is an awesome actress, great person. If anybody out there hasn't seen Fruit Fly by my very good friend and exceptionally talented,、uh, I'd go as far as to say geniuses that I know, H.P. Mendoza, who was on the show last week. Oh, that reminds me, I got a text in.、Um, uh, It, L.A. Renegan played the lead role in, in, their, in his awesome musical, Fruit Fly.、Um, and also in Col- she was also in Calm of the Musical, directed by my man, Rich Wong.、Uh, Timothy Han. Tim Han. <laughs> Timothy Han, I will, I will never forget the time that you took me on a magical tour of the Pixar campus in Emeryville, California. Tim is a. Yeah, so Tim, Tim works at Pixar, and、uh, we were actually hoping to make a Go Nakamura cartoon at the time. I hope we, get, I hope we actually get around to it, because、uh, just everything got all. I, I got busy with this movie, he got busy with his movies, but Tim, next time I see you, I hope we can.、Uh, What is Go Nakamura? Oh, Go Nakamura? Oh, he's the. I made two movies with him. He's a, a musician. He was on earlier, like playing the guitar and stuff like that.、Yeah. Um, well, well, you're at work and stuff. So he's the. Go is the star and co writer of my last two movies. But、um, he's.、Uh, yeah, we were going to make like a Go themed cartoon. Hey, can、again. you introduce your audience of people just now tuning in? All right, everybody who's just now tuning in,、uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Shiori Ideta. Hi. Uh, and so I'll re applaud you. <laughs> She already plays the crucial role of、uh, Chica, a girl who's in jail in Man from Reno. And we can't really give away too much about her character in the movie, you know, because it's a mystery and we want you to enjoy it.、Um, But,、uh, you know, she plays a rather unpleasant person and also spends the, entire, the entirety of the movie in, a,、uh, in an orange jumpsuit. But I <laughs> wanted you guys to meet the real Shiori so that when you see the movie, you'll realize what an incredible transformation she, she、uh, had to undertake. Let me, I'm going to dial up Pepe real quick, see if we can get him on again. The jail was so dusty. Was it? So dusty. I was like, I was touching, like, with a shelf or something,、yeah. and my hands are like dark after、oh, wow. I touched it. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Pepe. How you doing? Hey. Hey, we, 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 we had a little break in the action, so we thought, I, I didn't mean to kick you off earlier. I thought we'd bring you back in and say hi. No, 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 good. No, I was just watching you guys and we were taking all the. All the people anywhere in LA. 
Oh, we got we got a visit. We got we got more visitors. Hey, Yuki, how's it going? Yuki Yuki Matsuzaki is here to to visit. Oh, sure. he's getting hot for me. Um, I, I heard when he called in. What's that? I said I heard when he called in. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Here, Yuki, why don't you, why don't you come have a seat? Oh, is it Pepe? Yeah, Pepe is on. <laughs> you guys want to chat with Pepe for a few minutes? Everybody, hey, I want to introduce hey. the exceptionally talented uh, Mr. Yuki Matsuzaki. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out and take a quick break. So, Are you sure? Yeah, want want you, Pepe is Pepe is a. Uh, hey, Pepe. Pepe. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm, go, I'm doing Hi. great. Well, are you, uh, you're not coming by? No, no, I'm in, I'm in Newport Beach, so oh. it's hard for me to get away. But I've been, I've been watching it all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, saw, um, you know, my writing that a Dave is about to die or pass away, and I thought, wow, I gotta, <laughs> you know, come by and save him. <laughs> Uh huh. Thanks, guys. Oh, so you made it to Eagle Rock? That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of far though. Hey, you were you were great in the movie. Oh, you've seen it? I just just a, a rough cut. I, I just got to see uh, uh, some footages. Yeah, just no. Uh, you you you, uh, you saw the whole. I I showed you the whole rough cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know about I'm supposed to be uh, bragging about it yet. Oh well, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. <coughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, I saw. Well, first it, of all, I'm just totally, you totally excited. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I echo, I was was uh, talking earlier about how classic it it looks. You know how classic the movie looks, and it does. It just has so many different elements to it. It's just got so many different things going on at the same time. It's, it's really, and, and mainly it's, the actors are all so incredible. I mean, yeah, well, watching, I'm watching my, 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 my <laughs> prisoner right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm watching a uh, little delayed reaction because they're coming in right now, so, so, uh, anyway. I never punch, but it's great. So, so uh, what are you doing? What are you doing uh, uh, lately? You got anything coming up? Yeah, actually, um, I'm I'm leaving to the Philippines in two days. Oh wow! Yeah, I did a Filipino film called Instant yeah. Mommy. Yes, and uh, uh, they're calling me to promote the film because it's gonna be released in theaters. Uh huh. Yeah, wow. so I'm, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that's that's fabulous! You're gonna be uh, the, the in the Philippines. You'll be the the, the uh, Ben Affleck. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you mean you mean he's gonna be the Ben Affleck of the Philippines? Is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I hate that when people put in somebody else. No, you're gonna be the UP. <laughs> the UP of the Philippines. He's been athletic. He can't act. He ain't as good looking as you, and he can't act as good as you. <laughs> Pepe, you know this is live streaming. You can't edit it. You can't edit it. What do you say? <laughs> no, no. And and you're taller too. You what? Taller. Taller. Yeah. Taller. <laughs> yeah, we can we can say anything we want so long as we don't say anything bad. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I'm not kidding, man. You, you, uh, you really, you really uh, have an incredible presence. I tell you that the first time I, I met you, but it's your, <laughs> you have a sincerity yeah. about you. This, 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 really you know, um, for the audience, me and Pepe had uh, some scenes together, and it was fantastic experience. Pepe, you know, shared me some. Some of his um, acting techniques, and uh, because I was struggling with uh, some English dialogues, and and Pepe helped me out, and, and and the scene came out, you know, exceptionally 
uh, well, all thanks to Pepe. It was it was um, a yeah. marvelous experience for me. Very educational too. But no, but, but it was the fun part is when I was at first and I was trying to do some of the improv stuff, and then you play, you played me <laughs> real good. <laughs> It was so, such a pleasure. No, it, it was it was mutual. I mean, totally mutual because uh, uh, it was. In, and of course, having somebody like Dave there that allows all that to happen, you mm -hmm. know, on his watch. And, and I, I just keep talking about the crew. Just everything about this movie has been incredible. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, and, you, you've seen some footages, right? Yeah. Yeah. How is it? How is it? It was fabulous, both of you. Oh. You do in 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 the in the jail scene was just when I saw her coming out and walking and then just sat there and it was just like I mean it's 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 just amazing, uh, the actors, even though well, with you I was speaking English, but but I was listening to her and speaking uh, Japanese and and trying to feel when when to come in. Pepe, Pepe, Pepe. I think we, we gotta we gotta make sure we don't spoil we, the the uh, pl the plot to the people who. I, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I don't think I was talking too much. <laughs> oh no, right. it was my bad. I asked you. <laughs> we talked about her orange jumpsuit, which, by the way, looked very much like the jumpsuit I used in car wash. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a jumpsuit you wore when you were doing time. No, 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 no. They never caught me. They never caught me. I was still there. Thank you, Pepe. Yeah, you're welcome. You're, you're amazing. You're so great to work with. I learned a well, lot from you just doing a scene with you. It was, I mean, I think we all felt the same thing about everybody that we worked with on the film. I mean, that to me goes to show what kind of a story, because it's all in the story. And when you have people that get so inside the characters, uh, then then we're all lost in, in the moment. And it's, it's so much fun to do that. Mm -hmm. Where's Dave? Bathroom. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. You're you're taking the wheel now. You guys have it. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you how do you like you know how do you take questions like how are you guys taking questions from everybody? Oh, they can type it in or they can call and then I'll let you know. Okay. So far. They didn't write in Japanese, so. They... No, not yet. No. They can if they're watching. You guys can speak in Japanese and uh, ask ask them. If anyone in Japan is watching. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, like if, so if anyone has questions to Pepe or Serma, um, is it pronounced Serma or Serma? Serma. Serma. Question Pepe Serma, uh, we can translate right. it into English and ask him on your stead. Pepe Serma. Yes. Pepe. 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 And let's get some let let's get some questions. I want to hear some questions uh, from from Japan for you guys. Uh, so talk talk some Japanese to the people in Japan so they can call you and because uh, I'm oh. sure it's very interesting for them to see two incredible uh, Japanese actors that are working here in the United States that came here under. It wasn't easy for you guys, and it's still, it's never easy. Okay, so I'm going to translate it into Japanese, so I'm going to be speaking Japanese here a little. Man from the demo, no, Shiaku and Jita, Pepe Serma san, Scarface on the Pepe Serma san, ni, Moshi Nanka Shimonga, Tara, Endonaki ni Hongo de, Kaite Gasai, Tostara, Kochi de, Honyaku Ste, Kimas. Okay, now you can talk in English, Pepe. <laughs> so, well, I'm uh, just hoping that somebody will call. What what time is it in Japan right now? It's um, it's like, it's like 3 p.m. I think. Where oh, okay. Yeah, 3:30. Yeah, I, I yeah. think. So, so, um, God, here we are. 
talking to each other, but how about if you guys have a question for, for Dave? Dave? Oh, that's a good idea. Do I have any questions to Dave? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, what's his uh, next project oh, is? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I've been so focused on this one that, uh, you know, definitely definitely thinking about what's what's to come, but... Uh, How far are we from the Kickstarter? We're, we're about $5,000 mm -hmm. away. $5,000? Yeah. Why are you catching up on what happened today? I was I was very surprised when I saw the Kickstarter. I was like, wow. Well, we we started at we started at thirty two and then pledges kept pouring in and there's one big pledge that we're we're trying to get a hold of the the backer who did the one big really big pledge to you know to say him say have see if we can talk to him and say hello, say like hi. how big wow. the, the top the top the level. Yeah, yeah. You know, like ten thousand dollar pledge, so Wow, so our new producer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's been it's been a pretty awesome first part of the telethon. The second half, well, we're we're not even halfway. Actually, we're three and a half hours away from the halfway mark. Oh yeah. <laughs> what time did you start? Started at three p.m. So three p.m. to three p.m. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. I won't be able to stay here that long. Though. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's nice to have a little bit of company before they're so to every to everybody who's who's still out there watching, who's been watching all this time. I I want to I want to tell you guys thanks. Thanks so much for uh, for sticking it out during this first. We have been going now for eight hours and twenty eight minutes. And in that time, we've raised we you have raised us uh, over thirteen thousand dollars for completing Man from Reno. Thank you. Thank you. The Nihon de Mitru Katagata wa nani ka iru to omon desu kere domo. Moshi Matsuzaki Yuki san to Ideta Shiori san ni ko shitsumon demo areba. コメントセクションに書いてください。で、僕も、僕にも質問があれば、あの、頑張って日本語で、えー、答えますが、We'll see how it goes. <笑><笑><笑> I'm in the middle of here now. All right. Oh, Pepe, are you still on there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Pepe. Pepe. I'm good. Listen to you guys. Yeah. yeah. No, this is uh, the sound effects panel has kept things really lively on here. That's yeah. Not well, you see, I'm 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 also watching you guys on screen, but it's it's uh, I'm watching you. Uh, it's oh, a little bit delay. I remember the sound. Oh yeah. That you were, when the viewers are talking about. Mm -hmm. The the sound the, the, the cricket? crickets yeah yeah crickets is sort of like a, yeah it's different like different interpretation it's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's the chick the the I got it actually uh, shiori cicadas 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 yeah yeah uh, actually I think it's just crickets cicada. these these things crickets I think we can all fit in in here guys cicada yeah they'll they'll just Comment in as nice to see talent actors from Japan making interfering with us. Hmm? Hmm? Who wrote it? Our, 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 our friend and backer, Phil. I think there's one right behind. Uh, I'm watching one right behind you, Peter, on the couch. If you turn around, it's right on the couch. <laughs> what did it say? This, this right here? I was just kidding. I was oh, just kidding. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're such, you're such a jokester, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a good idea. I was trying to get you to yeah. jump. Here, if we can separate the thing into two of them, we can have it. Three seats. Oh, maybe we can do it now. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> you can see here. 
Yeah. Uh, we, so, we got 24 hey, hours to kill. We can talk this a little bit. Is anybody calling in with questions? Phil? I think it's this time. Yeah. I mean, I Phil had a comment. He just said it was great to see talented actors from Japan making an impact in the U.S. Yay. Yeah, I've been um, in this country for 13 years. And, 13 uh, years. Yeah. Um, I I think I've met Dave uh, when he had a screening of Wild on Rice at DGA, Directors Guild in America. I was there as well. Oh, yeah? Were yeah. you there? The same, oh, okay. same time. Oh, that's funny. Um, no, I was a student. I was, wow. I, I, I was there, too. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, interesting. I, I, wow. I, I, I met you at DGA, actually. I um, didn't know, I didn't realize that, oh. but... Uh, uh, Anyways, and uh, I, you know, said hello to Dave, and uh, Hiroshi was there, of course, uh, because, you know, I, I, I went to the screening because Hiroshi was the main character, and Hiroshi's my friend. Um, and I think I remember uh, me, Hiroshi, Dave, and one other guy, one other guy, talked about the possibility of a road movie starring me and Hiroshi. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was, I don't know how many years ago that was. That was four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, what? that was just a talk. Uh, but uh, and then uh, one day, um, mm -hmm. I saw they posted something on the Internet uh, about uh, a film... Um, the set in uh, some of the states, and I saw that, and I thought, um, oh, you know, if you ever need Japanese for that film, you know, I'm more than happy to. And didn't didn't realize back then that he was directing Matt Romino. I thought he was directing something else. And then he came back saying, yeah, there is, is actually a film. Uh, you, you you just may you might be able to you know star in I mean play a supporting role in and that was this film that was Romino and yeah, that's uh, how we reconnected yeah Yuki someone just asked if you were in the show the newsroom yes I was in okay the they recommended you I I was in the newsroom uh, episode six. I was a uh, spokesperson of uh, of the power company, um, and I was sitting like this, <laughs> and wearing a uh, blue suit, you know, blue suit, blue jacket, and everything. But I was speaking in Japanese, though. <laughs> Thanks for recognizing me. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And there's a question for Dave. Uh -huh. um, how will you distribute the Kickstarter money, and what else needs to be done? And did you calculate the fifty grand meticulously? Like how will it be spent? Who is that? Daniel. Well, oh. um, no, I didn't. But <laughs> I you're like, like, I was curious. <laughs> well, Daniel, um, yeah, it's the fifty grand was calculated really meticulously to take into account all the. Kickstarter and Amazon fees and shipping and shipping and making orders. having a party and all that other stuff. Um, so I think that uh, and and also, you know, we we talked with everybody who was working in post production about what our budget limitations were going to be and kind of figured out how much exactly that we needed, plus a little bit, just a tiny bit extra, like as a contingency. In, in case we needed more. And once we added all that stuff together and all the kind of contingency plans and uh, all the rewards and DVDs, Kickstarters, all, or uh, Kickstarter fees and all that, then 50,000 was like the, the, the magic number that we came up with. So um, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, to be honest, I was hoping that we could do a Kickstarter for like twenty-five thousand or something like that, but I had to I had to be honest with myself and you know, this isn't my first time around the block. I I know what things cost, so I, I was like, it's 
A lot of Kickstarter shoot like below what they really need just to make sure they hit it, but we decided to just we need to just go for the full amount. Mm. We decided, yeah, we decided that it, it would be foolhardy to, you know, undercut ourselves and be in a position where we wouldn't be able to finish this film. You know, there's so many people have done so much great work in it. Um, and I mean, the the fact of the matter is, like, film financing is so tricky these days. A movie like this that's in two different languages and, uh, you know, it has, has a really, it's really unconventional and everything. And everything like that, like, like if I if I had taken this to like a regular film financing company, the first thing they'd tell me is, well, the author from Japan, she can't be Japanese, and um, the sheriff character, you you can't you can't cast who you want. You know, they they give me a list of like five people, and and I have to choose somebody else. And so, um, you know, the the places where we were able to get financing from gave me all the flexibility that I wanted to make the movie that I wanted, but I could only get enough movie to, or, uh, I could only get enough money to shoot the movie and not actually finish it outright. So before we started shooting, I knew that eventually I would have to come to Kickstarter and hope that enough people liked the footage that we shot that they would, you know, consider putting in some more, some more money. You also applied for a grant. Yeah, you know, before we did this, we I applied for every grant under the sun that is uh, applicable for for this film, and um, I didn't I didn't get any. A lot of it, I think, you know, the the movie is uh, even though I think it's really special, it's also it's entertainment. You know, it's not like a there isn't like a underlying social justice issue driving driving the movie. It's something that's like a really personal project for me, and a lot of the stuff that happens in it is really surprising. I think it has a lot of strong themes and everything like that, but it's not like about a historical event or anything like that. It's it's very much like a it's a it's an old fashioned thriller, you know? It's it's a it's a meat and potatoes movie. It's not like a a history lesson or anything like that. It's not eat your vegetables cinema that I like to call it. Mm-hmm. Might have a couple Who might they cast as as Pepe or Yuki, if this was like a studio, who do you think? I, I have no idea. I I don't I don't even want to what speculate Pepe because think? I didn't have to. Who would be who would be Pepe? Who would be Pepe? Well, he's a, that that role couldn't. Is he still on the phone? Hey Pepe, are you still there? Yes, I am. Yeah, well, I, we were just talking about how the fact that the regular Hollywood channels, you know, they they insist on casting people who are, you know, huge, 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 huge stars in the leading role, in, in the leading roles. Yeah. And to me, man, you're, you're, you're the biggest star there is. I just, I want you to know that. <laughs> but, you know, I just, I just hesitate to think what would happen if I tried to take this movie, like, to, you know, a, a regular, not, not even a studio, but just, oh, like, a regular film oh, financing yeah. company. Yeah, any, any if if you don't have that TVQ, forget about it. Yeah. And uh, and and but I think I think the what you're talking about is you think it's it's more like a historic, you know, theme uh, movie. But in essence, it is pretty historic because it's about Japanese actors, about a Japanese story with. Uh, a Latino sheriff and his uh, daughter who really has nothing to do with the fact that they're, they're American. And, and the Japanese are just living, it's just an American story. They're not, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not a Japanese story. It's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a universal story. Yeah, it it, it wasn't like a a lot of a lot of movies that are about I don't know uh, 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 about characters that are of that are of any specific ethnicity they feel like you know the filmmakers feel like they have to like I don't know wear that on their sleeve so to speak like if it's a if it's a movie about Japanese characters they have to 
um, every aspect of the movie has to revolve around the fact that they are Japanese. You know, it, feel, it feels like they have to make excuses for there to be Japanese characters in the movie. And they try too hard often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I agree. I, I don't know if, if they have to put a, a Buddha in every corner and then a Asian or a Lupe hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, in real life, people are just people, no matter where they're from. I mean, languages yeah. and culture might be different, but I think it's it makes for a richer experience if that stuff isn't uh, if if that stuff is sort of incidental to the story that you're trying to tell. You know, it's definitely it's definitely part of the story, but it's not. You don't feel like you have to make excuses for it to be there. I mean, it's like why why can't the why can't the sheriff be a Hispanic guy? Why can't the author be a, a Japanese lady? Um, okay. I mean, there there are Japanese authors in real life. Why can't this movie be about one? So, right. That's my right. thought on it. It's it's, it's uh, that's I think that's why the audience out there, the, the Kickstarter audience I'm talking about, uh, jumped on this. Such a fervor, really, to 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 make this happen. I mean, uh, I know early on when we got to I think close to twenty thousand, you were telling me, well, if you get to the uh, law average says if you get to this amount by this amount by this time, then we'll reach our goal. And then we had a lull there, but I don't know if anybody has ever done this before in Kickstarter. Had a telephone and been doing what you've been doing uh, on they, it. Yeah, they, stole the idea. we. I stole the idea from somebody else. <laughs> Plenty of people have done it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's done twenty four hours. Twenty so twenty four hours around. might be. And, and I don't even think that because there was a guy who sat on the toilet. He he said that he was gonna stay on the toilet until he reached his goal. <laughs> <laughs> so there've been I'm, I'm still, more interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but you know, I, I'm really I'm glad that people are responding to it. And for everybody out there who's listening, we we still have three days, and we haven't hit our goal yet. Every bit helps. And uh, oh, we need it. I mean, we need the people to to kick in. We haven't talked about that for for a little while. Yeah. About how much we need for all of you that are listening right now to get all your friends on it. And it, it's not only the fact. But I keep uh, saying this, it's not only the fact that, that we're uh, uh, and, uh, wanting the money to come in, but we want you to spread the word about the movie. And like all the people that you have out there that have been following you in all the different uh, film festivals around the country and have seen your work uh, and now are really excited about this new, totally new genre that you've jumped into. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, um, I, I, I think that, I mean, half the reason that we did the, the Kickstarter was really to reconnect with fans of, of the movies that, that we've all made in the past, as well as find some new fans who, who might take a look at the Kickstarter page, watch the footage, and say, hey, this sounds like this could be pretty good. And uh, so, I mean, from, from, from that small group, Hopefully we can all grow into a, a you know a nonviolent army of uh, of San Marino supporters. <laughs> yeah. Pe Pepe, Pepe, it's fundraising and it's friend raising. So yeah, it's about raising fun. the friends and fans. Mm. Did you say fun fundraising? I said fun it's and friend. yeah, it's fun and it's friend raising. So it's both. It's it's not. But it's not just about the money. It's about um, con reconnecting with with fans. That's nice. Yeah, you know, it all goes the it's the fun, the fan, the friend. It's all 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 mixed into one because all the new friends. Because how exciting it is, especially for the Asian community to to see that that. It's happening, but it has to happen from within. Like mm -hmm. what, what you're doing and what all the other uh, Asian filmmakers are doing, making and doing the incredible work that they're doing, and why they're all supporting 
hurt each other so much. I mean, it's it's fantastic to see that uh, brotherly, sisterly um, love that that I I just I've been hearing all night from people that that uh, you know help fund the project that are also filmmakers. I mean, it's tough out there, you know. Yeah, it's it's a it's a community. I mean, I'm really touched at all the filmmakers and film professionals who uh, who have kicked in for for this project because they believe in it. And, and I know that every it's hard for you know that's. And that's, Pepe, there's like there's been like other filmmakers on Kickstarter like right now with campaigns just like us, and they reached out to us to tell them how awesome it is, and they've even promoted us. Even though they're also raising money right now as well, so that's like they're really awesome. Yeah, and, and one thing I'd like to throw out there, well, well, with anybody that's out there, just to get people to go on the other movie that I did called A Guru Phobia, uh, just to like the page. Now, we're not doing a Kickstarter or anything yet, but I star in that film as well. But it's totally different kind of movie and it's with a young Latino couple and and it's it's a great thing to see independent films in such a it's, I've always loved independent films so much more than, than anything else I mean it, it's just so much more fun that, that you talk about community that's what it is yeah you're doing so many things Pepe and uh, one of our backers actually texted and wanted to say uh, to you, congrats, and tell Pepe that he is the man. I grew up with him being one of the most consistent, great Latino actors. So that's from uh, Phil in San Diego, one of our backers. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. Oh. 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 Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Um. <laughs> Man, thanks, thanks so much, Pepe. So Pepe's got a whole bunch of projects going on this year. He's a busy guy. He's got a guru phobia. He's also got red and yellow kill a fella, where you play a bad yeah. guy, right? And it was interesting because you guys were talking about uh, 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 the Texas Chainsaw Massacre earlier, and Kim Hinkle, who wrote it, I went to college with, and the young guys that I did the movie with, the horror western. Uh, thriller uh, were his students and were students with my nephews and I went to do a motivational uh, talk to their junior high 25 years ago and they hired me to do their movie. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's that red and yellow killer fella and there. It's, it's, it's uh, Kim Hinkle is, is their mentor. So it's all tying together. You know. So you never you never know when uh, when those connections and the people that you meet when it blossoms into something some yeah, kind of creative yeah. partnership. It's a small how world. Much we need, but how much do we need to reach forty six thousand? To reach forty six thousand? Forty six thousand? Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me check real quick. I haven't actually looked at it. Only about three hundred thirty dollars. Oh, we're only we're only three hundred and thirty-two dollars away from forty-six thousand. Ooh! Wow! Wow! Man, we're we're three hundred and thirty-two dollars away from forty-six thousand. Nice. Let's make that happen. We only got ten minutes till till midnight here in California. Let's see if we can make that happen. <laughs> in, ten in ten minutes. In ten minutes. We, we got ten minutes till midnight, but I have fifteen more hours of of this telephone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we got we got it's gonna be great because I mean, everything that everybody has been talking about tonight. Not everybody has been on the whole time, obviously. Like like uh, you guys have, and I've been listening. Is where the money is going? I mean, it's. The studios waste so much money. All this, every penny of, of, that you guys are, are, are pitching in for, and your Kickstarter out there, is going in to make this movie just, it just it's just uh, 
the diamond is just being just being shined. You know, it's going to be. This is a, an incredible piece, and and we need every bit of that. And if we don't, and if we don't reach it, we don't get it. And, and then no. also, uh, Dave is such a terrible musician. <laughs> there is that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take that drum set away from me. Exactly. Yes. Hey, but any, I just want to throw a, a, a shout out to any directors out there because I always said, man. That Dave was the Caucasian Roberto Benini. He's an incredible <laughs> actor, man. If you haven't seen Big I thought you were going to pitch them on yourself, not me. <laughs> oh, no. I, I've, uh, uh, and Pepe, yeah. you got to stop calling me the Caucasian Robert Benini because he is Caucasian. <laughs> the real one. <laughs> oh, okay. Roberto Benini. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I know we can't get into any racial things except that, that we are all universal, and that's what this is about. The fact that, and, 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 no, it's, I'm not arguing with any racial thing. It's just that Roberto Benigni is a Caucasian guy. So if you call me the Caucasian <laughs> Roberto Benigni, <laughs> it may as well be all of uh, <laughs> it's it's all right. It's all right. Okay. Uh, 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 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're the American of the Yeah. There you go. There you go. And uh, and 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 David will jump up on a chair. Uh, will I though? No. You know what? You know where that comes from? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I remember. <laughs> So a lot of people, Roberto Benigni jumped up when he got the Oscar and, and was crawling, was jumping up in the ceiling. Yeah. But was... anyway, so I don't want to halt the, the time. Uh, oh, well, yeah, well, the time's going real fast. We've only got oh, 13 hours and 7 minutes left in tonight's <laughs> broadcast. So. But, 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 but you can go all the way over there, mate, and I want to hear him some uh, FaceTime and talk time. Again. Yeah. In fact, I think maybe maybe I'll, I'll interview Yuki now. While we... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be listening. All right. Hey, thanks so much for calling in, Pepe. I'll see you yeah. soon, Pepe. Bye, Pepe. Okay, I'll, I'll probably be going to sleep. So I, I'm going to hang up and listen to you guys on the computer. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. All, All right. right. And see you guys in the morning. We'll see you. Okay. That was Pepe Serna. The one and only Pepe Serna. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for calling in. Today. <laughs> so, Yuki. Yes, yes. I've been seeing you in movies for, for 10 years. You know, like uh, Last Samurai, mm -hmm. Letters from Iwo Jima, all, all kinds of movies and everything. I'm curious. Uh, so, you've, you've been here in, in Hollywood for, you said, 13 years? Thirteen years, yeah. I've been, yeah. I was in New York for nine months, and then uh, in Hollywood for about about thirteen years, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm curious, like, what was what was it like, you know, when you when you first started going to auditions and. <laughs> <laughs> My, um, you know, when you start st start out, you know nothing about the business, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know anything about it either. My first audition was uh, a B action film, and uh, I, I don't know how to make a resume either. <laughs> so my friend showed a picture of me, and I hand written, hand wrote my resume on the back of the picture. Nice. And took it with me, and then you know that was my first audition, and, and I got cast. Whoa, that's, that's very impressive. But the uh, film was uh, poorly received, and, uh, <laughs> and critics, critics called it, you know, worst movie of 
lot of worse movies. Um, and then they said um, Yuki Matsuzaki was the worst actor in this worst movie. Was, uh, <laughs> that was how I started out. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, there's there's no better way to start out because then you, I mean, yeah, you so, start from the bottom and you can only go up from there. So did you feel like it was a, a valuable experience? Oh, well, of yeah. course, and definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. Because uh, before that, I was, you know, because I got into business so easily. Like, you know, you go to the first audition and you get cast. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, it's so easy. Yeah, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. Yeah, I'm going to be, you know, on the Oscar podium in probably like four or five years, <laughs> and I was uh, so arrogant in in that uh, way. But that kind of uh, pride just got shattered mm -hmm. <laughs> by that critic. <laughs> so, you know, that was <laughs> such a, um, an educational experience for me that, I, you know, I, it made me so humble. Well, we've, yeah. we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm curious, so was uh, your role in The Last Samurai, was that your first time getting cast in, like, a, a studio movie? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that was uh, uh, 2000... One or two, I think. Oh wow! I, I cool. was just nineteen years old back then, actually. Crazy! Wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I've talked to Hiroshi a lot about uh, shooting the Last Samurai because he also has a yeah. a nice little scene in there where that's how I actually met him. Oh, you yeah, you know, I met him on the set. Right. Okay. One day, uh, we were at the studio, Warner Brothers studio, and I saw a guy uh, who was actually pale. And then sitting on a chair, and I was wondering why, you know, he was so pale. And I asked him, "Are you okay?" And he said, uh, "I actually fell from the horse." <laughs> and that was Hiroshi. <laughs> he broke his rib because he fell from a horse. Oh man! <laughs> and that's how I met him. That was the first uh, time ever I met him. But uh, you know, I, I um, he was such a nice guy and a funny guy. Um, I still remember his scene from The Last Samurai. If you have watched Last Samurai, uh, Hiroshi Watanabe, the guy who was the main character of, uh, from, of uh, White and Rice and who, had a, who played a supporting role in Man from Vino, uh, played the uh, guard of Katsumoto's house in The Last Samurai, where a uh, British actor, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Timothy... Timothy Spall. Timothy Spall... Uh, visited the house, and this guard came, uh, came up with a sword. And he said, you can't enter here. You can't enter here. And, and uh, Yeah, yes. and, then, uh, and then Timothy Spall sort of... Said, this is the president of the United States. Pointing to Tom Cruise. Cruise. Tom Cruise, yeah. yeah. That was Hiroshi. He's, he's so funny. He is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Everything he does is so funny. He's just one of those guys that, like, you... When he's on screen, everybody just kind of like when I went to went to Japan with him to promote White on Rice at the Osaka Film Festival. Like he walked out on stage in a in like a cowboy suit with a big white cowboy hat. He did, and, yeah, and he took it off. He was like totally serious, and everybody in the audience you could just hear him. <laughs> 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 just like started. he's just got such great comedic presence. <laughs> So yeah. that's so that's how you guys met, mm -hmm. and then we uh, worked again on Letters from Iwo Jima, at Clint Eastwood film. Uh, Hiroshi played the assistant of Ken Watanabe's character uh, Kuribayashi, mm -hmm. and uh, I played um, uh, one of the privates uh, called Mozaki, who committed uh, mass suicide. I just spoiled the movie for you uh, <laughs> in the film. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, and then again, Hiroshi's character was so serious yet so funny in that film. So yeah, uh, yeah he's, he was, he's he was such great. an amazing actor. Isn't he? Whoa! I want to give a quick shout out to new backers, Daryl Wharton Rigby. Yeah! yeah. Man, the latest backer. Is Mr. Taro Goto, co-producer. <laughs> Taro, I love you, man. <laughs> I, you guys didn't get to work with Taro because he was only the uh, 
producer of the San Francisco. Show. Oh, okay. Yeah, but man, he he is a he is a miracle worker. He's a great, great, great guy, great producer. He did like five people's jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Taro. Once again, once again, you go above and beyond, sir. <laughs> and I'll be sure to water the plants as well. I'm taking care of the plants in this apartment right now. Oh, you're not. You're talking about any euphemism or anything. No, no. <laughs> you literally need to water the plants. Yeah. <laughs> so, Letters from Iwo Jima was, was sort of an, inter was an interesting event in Hollywood and Japanese film history because there were, you know, a handful of major stars who came over from, from Japan mm -hmm. and then a whole bunch of amazingly, uh, amazing Japanese talent are based in Hollywood. Who were in uh, not movie. just, yeah, not just Hollywood actually. They, um, one guy came from New York um, and uh, he actually they held auditions in Japan. Mm -hmm. In California, Hawaii, London, and New York, I think. Wow. Um, and then, and Clint Eastwood handpicked about now uh, five main characters from from those, and uh, um, also he cast f uh, five major Japanese stars mm -hmm. from Japan. And he, they they all had to audition anyway, uh, but uh, all of the main characters were handpicked by Clint Eastwood, and I I auditioned as well um, back then. I, I did. I, I didn't, you know, think I was gonna cast mm -hmm. because, you know, normally they don't cast me uh, for that kind of period of film because I'm too tall. You know, I'm ah. six foot one. So you know, they, it's, I'm not your typical Japanese guy. You know, when Hollywood think of Japanese, they tend to think, you know, a short guy. But, uh, <laughs> but we're uh, smashing those stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is actually. But, uh, so you know, I, I didn't expect to be cast, and uh, you know, um, later they told me that uh, Clint Eastwood saw the my saw my audition tape and thought, um, you know, he liked my smile, saying I looked like a teddy bear. <laughs> That's and, hilarious. And That's awesome. That was reason why I got cast for that, that role. Nice. Yeah. Well, because I looked like a teddy bear. Well, I, I, I'm interested because uh, not probably not all of the cast members spoke English, right? Like some some of the guys who who came over from Japan. Uh, I'm, I'm just I guess I want to get a sense of what it was like to be on that set. Because there's all these talented actors from all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, the whole film is in Japanese and stuff for like a couple of scenes yeah. and everything like that. This, what, what was the day to day like? You know, we were all trying to figure out actually. You know, uh, we ju all jumped in. We got the script script two days before the shooting. Wow. You know, I didn't have a script until two days before. Uh, so, you know, I didn't know much about the film until then. And uh, so we were all trying to figure out, and, and the first day of the shoot, cast met together, and we figure out that uh, we don't have a Japanese uh, military expert on the mm. set. Mm. The guy who's, uh, who's known in business for knowing all the Japanese military uh, thing, his name is Dan King, he was sick. No. So he, he, couldn't, he couldn't come to the set. So uh, they they didn't have any expertise for the expert for the uh, Japanese military rules. So um, so what do they do? Uh, you know, just kind of. We I I decided to um, make a list of salutes, mm -hmm. of the Japanese military salutes. I, I read through all the military rule books and you know made some list of sal salutes. How you do it, when you do it, and you know uh, angles and everything. And I gave, I made like five prints out mm -hmm. of the of the, um, the list of the salutes and gave you know gave to all the cast members. Gotcha. So that they can all you know, look it up and and you know. No, they're so that they're doing the right thing at the right, right time. Right thing at the right time. Because you know we are very picky when it comes to details. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese are um, pretty picky on those. I, I remember when I did some Q and A's in Japan, even for White on Rice, which is a 
you know, a domestic comedy, which is not the kind of thing that really, you know, as, especially in the U.S., little details, the audiences tend to just let it go. But in the Q&A, people would ask me stuff like, how did, how did his room fill with smoke when he's supposed to be living in the basement room? Like, wouldn't that, like, would, how, did, <laughs> how did the smoke get down there through the vent? And I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> Do they ever ask you why, uh, why were they eating? Curry and rice with hushy with chopsticks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got that one a lot. <laughs> I got that one a lot. Um, but I mean, the the thing that the thing that I learned also in that movie because the there some, sometimes like I would say, well, let's do this, and instead of instead of telling me, well, that seems a little weird. Sometimes the cast members would be like, well. Oh, it's, if that's what the director wants, then he must kill me once. But actually, you know, my knowledge of Japanese culture is very actually quite limited. So I, I you know, so it's always nice when when you guys give me your two cents and let me know, you know, hey Dave, this doesn't seem this doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, I mean, some people, you know, Dave is extremely, uh, let's say, generous and cooperative director. And who's very, um, let's say, uh, who's determined to you know make things right for Japanese audience. So you 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 are very listening, but sometimes it's extremely hard for us to make changes. Yeah, of course. Like of course. I, once I went to the set, and uh, you know, some I see a lot of wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I want once I play a scientist. And there was a huge sign, uh, which was supposed to be saying a "fire, uh, fire." Uh, well, how do you call that? Fire escape? No, no, no fire extinguisher. Oh, extinguisher. fire extinguisher. It was supposed to be saying "fire extinguisher" in Japanese, in a red sign on it. But instead, the letter was saying um, "digestive organs." <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, on the set, we had a huge sign saying "digestive organs" in Japanese. <laughs> but. You know, the good news was a set piece. I couldn't get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it was it was just sitting there. Well, there it's it's always a challenge as an, as an actor when to know when to say something and when <laughs> when something can be. And it's the same thing as a director. When people point things out, sometimes you say, "Oh, yeah, that's a good idea," and other times you you know sort of how it's gonna come together. So you're like, "Don't don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. be fine." Yeah. So that's it's a it's all about balance. It's all about balance. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, so things got off to a start where you guys, you, you were doing some military research and stuff to kind of uh, make sure that all the everybody was on the same track with the salutes and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you and Hiroshi both have some pretty crazy big emotional scenes in those in those in that movie. Yeah, I've heard that Clint Eastwood. Rarely does more than one or two takes. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, even in those big emotional scenes. Yeah, um, most of my scenes were shot in either zero or one take. Zero takes mean that he shot the rehearsal. Yeah, never went into the take. Yeah, it was you know it was pretty uh, tough until you know you get used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know. <laughs> You gotta be extremely comfortable with that. Yeah, uh, you know, you can't, you can't. How do let's say, let's say, you can't experiment. Like you can't do one take and then try another. Right. You do one take. That's it. That's the one that the audience is gonna see. Yeah. That must you be nerve wracking. Uh, it was of course. Uh, you know, when I when I when I see the film, I can tell. Um, in the first day of the shoot, you know, the scenes I shot in the first day of the shoot, I can tell. I'm kind of nervous. Kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, you know, after the first day, I thought, you know, if, if I become the character and just be on the set, I don't have to act. In that way, I don't have to stress out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to just, you know, just stay in the character, be in that moment, and just go whatever happens with, you know, with the scene, and that's how I played and. So for, for anybody just tuning in, um, I'm talking with Yuki Matsuzaki, an actor in my new film, uh, Man from Reno, 
And Yuki's been in a lot of great films, and he's also uh, often been sort of the, the go-to guy in big Hollywood movies when there is a, a, a Japanese uh, role in it. So we were just talking about his experience of working on Clint Eastwood's Letter from, Letters from Iwo Jima. Um, so I understand that like the shooting location was out in Barstow, about yeah. two hours away from Yeah, we, um, we shot at the Silver Mine. Oh, right. Yeah, Barstow. Okay, right out there. Yeah, gotcha. Um, do you, I'm curious, uh, were, were, were there any times when, like, when, okay, so you do, like, one take of a scene, mm -hmm. or, or, like, the, the ensemble does one take of a scene, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, uh, Clint Eastwood calls cut, all right, moving on, or wh whatever he says, and, and then you guys are like, we really need another take. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, like sometimes, sometimes you seriously, uh, you know, like, screw, I mean, screwed up. Yeah. He's now swearing. Right? <laughs> like you, you say something totally different from the from the script. And in that case, you may have to do another take. You know, but uh, um, clean. You know, one day I asked Plant uh, why he only takes one take. And this is what he said. Um, he said he considers a storyline as a, a big river. It's a big river current. And um, as long as that river is connected to the ocean, he doesn't mind if there are some rocks or any obstacles along the way, as long as that river flows out to the ocean. And that's how, how he, you know, what he said. And um, yeah, that's yeah. oh, interesting. Um, so, what's it like when so you're you're walking into a set for the first time, and uh, what's like a blocking rehearsal like with Clint Eastwood? Or does he just say do what you do? I mean, what when well, you're starting a scene out, what, what's it like? Blocking the scene is just blocking. You don't act at all. Mm -hmm. You um, you just mumble your lines, but you don't act. So he just has you just walk through it. Yeah, just you know, you do so you do it here, you do it that, you do it there. That's it, and that's blocking. Mm -hmm. But you don't act. That's no rehearsal. And then we do the camera rehearsal. And then actually, what, uh, uh, what's unique about Clint's set is um, he direct while the camera is still rolling. Hmm. Like he, uh, you know, he uh, like he he always uses a steady cam. Mm -hmm. And he gave the direction while the camera is rolling, while the, the actors are actually doing the scene. Interesting. And so it, it all happened at the same time. And uh, like you know, while we were doing the scene, he sometimes say, uh, um, "You can stand up. You can uh, face this way." That kind of you know, he yeah. literally <laughs> gives us direction <laughs> while the scene is going on. And that's the clean sway, and you know, but once you get used to it, you hear the voice, not as Clint's voice, but your subconscious voice. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bother you much, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and, and you know, like, um, if you if you've seen Letters from Ujima, I'm sure you uh, remember the scene, my the most you know my most emotional scene. Where my hands go somewhere else, you know what I'm saying? My hands get separated from my body and go somewhere else. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, right. that moment. I don't want to. I don't want to go into the you know detail. Uh, but that moment was shot a totally. Um, what's the word? Like, uh, like almost like an ad lib. Like, it wasn't on the script at all. Mm -hmm. He saw. Um, he saw my hand holding that photo, which was in the script, and he gave the direction to the camera guy, and he actually shot that photo and ended up in the scene. Oh, it wasn't in the script, but he you know, instantly felt that necessary shot, so he just added that right there. In, in while. So it's, it's a cooperative you know, shooting. Like You feel like uh, Clint and the camera guy is actually 
one of the scene, like one of the, um, you know, scene partner. Mm -hmm. And we just cooperate together. So he's, he's always got the camera on a steady cam, mm -hmm. kind of telling him where to go and that mm -hmm. kind of thing as the take. Yeah, I think he, he plays jazz. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. He is a he is a jazz musician. Musician, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. So after that, um, you're you're also you've worked with uh, in in some lighter work uh, with Steve Martin <laughs> and Andy Garcia, and there's when you say lighter, are you talking about uh, the mood of the film or the the box office? The the mood of the film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about box office, man. <laughs> By the way, Ivan Wheelwright said Clint Eastwood's style is really intriguing. Excellent stories, Yuki Sun. Oh, thanks, yeah. Ivan. I, Ivan's tuning in from Australia. He's uh, a guy named Ivan Wheelwright who. Just, Ivan. Yeah, he just happened to see some of my films. He's in Australia. Oh. And uh, his his wife is from Okinawa, oh. and so and they've been tuning in to the. For the broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Thank They've been you. watching almost all day. They stepped out to get food. And really? Oh yeah. Stepped oh, man. out and came back. That calls, and then... that calls for an applause for <laughs> Ivan and Miyuki. <laughs> Ivan, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer for you. Yeah. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a good offer. Right like there. anyone, anyone. I mean, if you want to ask questions, I've. Um, I worked with Tom Cruise, uh, who else? Uh, Tom Cruise, Clint Eastwood, uh, Steve Martin, Andy Garcia, yeah. uh, John Cleese, uh, who else? Uh, Emily Mottmer, uh, Johnny Depp, um, who else? Um, stuff, people like that. I want to give a quick shout out to Mr. Bob Housley, Nate Housley, as he's known in, in uh, on Facebook land. Bob. Thanks so much for the pledge, buddy. Really appreciate it. So, yeah, Bob's a good guy. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think Bath too. What, what was that set like? I was... I was totally freaked out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, imagine, you know, like... If you were cast in a you know Hollywood film, yeah, as a, one of the main characters, and if you were surrounded by you know Alfred Molina, Andy Garcia, Steve Martin, and John Cleese, that's party time, dude. Uh, who, who else? Uh, Jeremy Irons. <laughs> like you know, I could see how that might be intimidating. I was totally intimidated, but uh, and I you know I was trying hard. I was just trying hard. Uh, but uh, they were they were so nice, you know. Um, Andy Garcia, he he was such an amazing guy. He was such a nice guy. He was always polite, and he he always shows up on the set when well, even when he's off camera. Mm, wow! Like yeah. once um, I had a scene where uh, Andy was supposed to be uh, standing right next to the camera, off camera. And normally, uh, when that happens to, you know, stars like Andy, they just say, uh, okay, Yuki, this is your eye line. <laughs> so basically, these two you know, fingers are eyes of your uh, scene partner, like that. Yeah, to, to anybody who might not be, who might not have worked on a movie set before, Eye lines are a big deal, and oftentimes when actors, when you see a close-up of an actor and they're supposed to be looking at the other person on the scene, the person's not even there. They're looking at like a piece of tape that's stuck to the side of the camera so yeah. they know where to look. And part of the craft of film acting is being able to do that. <laughs> but it's sure, it sure is usually, especially like a big star like Andy Garcia, would totally adios and they'd have somebody else just come in yeah. and read his line. Normally they, they don't call those you know stars from their trailers or off camera scenes because it's too much you know they, they have so much more works or so much more important scenes to do later on so they don't want to uh, wear them out so to say. So basically you know I normally have to uh, do a scene with your with someone's fingers or just a piece of tape but on the Prefer to to stand there, 
he didn't even have his costume. He was just wearing a bathrobe. But he, he just standed there for me, for, for just for me, no one else. And I was just, you know, was just a starting actor back then. In the, but, in the, but he he was polite enough to do that. And the, and the reason why was he himself started out from from the bottom. He told me that he didn't have have any any works for eight years, and he started doing small roles, and then he had a big big break. Um, so he knows the hardship of being an actor. So uh, you know, wow, and, and what a stand-up guy. Yeah, and then he he said, you know, when he was a starting actor, he didn't like the, you know, he didn't like doing a scene with someone else's fingers. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and it's very hard. I mean, with my, uh, I, I've only done enough acting to be able to respect what you guys do all all the more, and at least empathize. But you know. Acting to an eyeline and everything is, I, I think it's a necessary evil as a director, but when, uh, but having to act to just, you know, like script supervisor reading the lines and stuff like that, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hard, but uh, sometimes I get surprised how uh, not when people, uh, you know, are aware right. that's how it's been shot. Yeah, you know, so many times they they think it's shot, you know, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they were talking for real. I'm I'm personally like I'm I'm the the type as as you could probably tell from working together on this movie where I just like to do whatever it is that's gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. So um, I I had you guys working to eye lines all the time. You know, like don't don't look at her, look over here or something like that because. For me, um, when I'm watching movies, if the eye lines, if the person's like not quite looking in the right place, mm. it's very distracting to me personally. I feel like it kind of, and that's like uh, that's not something that I. It's something. It, it's a. It's like a pet peeve that's developed over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't on my first movie. I didn't care about eye lines at all. In fact, in in that movie. My poor cinematographer Bill Otto was always having to try to explain to me the importance of eye lines and everything. Where I was being like, "Nah, dude, yeah, dude it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> let's shoot. Let's shoot it." Yeah. But now, like when I watch it, it's like, "Oh man, uh, I, I should have let him take the time to find the right eye line for the for the actor." But you know, for Dave, for Matthew Vino, because we had a rehearsal mm -hmm. we did, beforehand. Yeah. And we also had some, you know, uh, wide shot or rehearsal before the scene. In that way, even we, even you know, even if we were looking at the piece of tape, we can still see the other actor there. Right. Because yeah, that's, we that's had right. enough takes to, you know, to actually visualize that person there mm -hmm. talking to me. It's, it's kind of like the rehearsal, because when, when you're on set, you always want to do like a camera rehearsal so that the whole crew can watch and know what's going on. You know, like the, the sound guy needs to know what's going to happen in the scene so that he can know where to stand and know where he can, you know, fit the boom in to, to pick up the actor's lines and everything. And that also, in a lot of ways, for the actors, can kind of function as like the first couple takes in a way so that everybody gets a little bit warmed up and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, we have a great question for Yuki. Yes, yes. How do you feel when a Japanese role in a Hollywood film is taken by a Chinese actor? Um, that's a very <laughs> interesting question. I love um, this question. Well, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't antagonize that actually. I, um, you know, I don't. As long as that actor is put uh, enough respect into the role. Then I'm not gonna be, uh, you know, mad about mm -hmm. it. As, but I, when someone, you know, takes a role and don't put put much work and, and just, you know, just wings it, that's when I get little, you know, uncomfortable thing. Mm -hmm. in. But uh, uh, as long as a person puts, to, you know, some sure. love into that role, sure. then you know. I'm okay because, you know, we as an actors, 
um, as actors, we don't want to be uh, we don't want to be how to say restricted by our nationality. We we want to be freed by uh, our nationality, um, and you know sometimes. I want to be able to play an American role where an uh, American audience sees me and don't even recognize that I'm Japanese. They just see me and, and believes that, uh, believe that I'm a you know, born and grown American citizen. And that's you know, one of my goals. But if you, um, uh, if you basically limit one actor's um, roles by their nationality, then, you know, all I can play forever is Japanese. I won't be able to play American roles, I won't be able to play Korean roles, I won't be able to play a Chinese role. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want this industry to be that way. I want, I want it to be um, fair to the capability of that actor's ability, uh, like if that actor is capable of playing that role and convince the audience that, that, that you know, whatever nationality that role is, then I think it's fine. That's, you know, how I feel about it. That's an awesome answer. That's an awesome answer. Oh, yeah. I just want to give a very quick shout out to our newest backer, uh, Shiori Ideta. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we de-virginized her on Kickstarter. Oh, she's never done it before? <laughs> and I also want to give a quick shout out to my very good friend, Mari Ishida, who's been watching all day from New York. Mari-san, arigatou gozaimasu. Hello. Ano, zuto mite kurete, honto ni arigatou gozaimasu. Mari-san is a script supervisor in the Japanese film industry who's helped me so much on uh, all my... All, all my uh, projects in the past couple of years. So thanks so much, Mighty Sana. Mm. Get some sleep. Okay. <laughs> and, and, any more questions coming in? Well, I mean, just a follow up question, but I think that Yuki answered it because we asked, do you feel that these was a certain amount of authenticity? But I think I think it was answered. So what was the question? Authenticity? Uh. Like whether it, it it loses a certain amount of authenticity, like if a Chinese actor plays a Japanese role. I think uh, it, you know it depends on um, what kind of role that is. You know, if that role is a period piece, and it's probably uh, safe to to cast. Uh, you know, if that role is Japanese, a Japanese. Um, as you, as you, if you are Japanese, Chinese, or Korean, I'm sure you know how different we are culturally, and uh, you know, uh, linguistically, basically language-wise, we don't even speak the same language. So um, that's uh, you know, pretty big cultural barrier right there. Some actors are capable of going over that barrier, like uh, 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 Kaneshiro, Takeshi, Kaneshiro, 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 Kaneshiro. He's a Taiwanese actor, but he can act in Chinese or Japanese. And he can do it so well that when people watch him performing, they don't even doubt that he is Taiwanese or Japanese or whatever. That is, you know. So, um, yeah, some actors are capable of doing that, and uh, other actors can't. I want to jump in and give a quick shout out to uh, Kimura Toshihiko san. Thank you so much. Are you a lot of Japanese backers? Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> thanks so much. Um, thanks so much, and also let us know which of the bonus DVDs you want to be added to your award. Those are, those are still around. I'll put them back in the comments. Okay. I, I didn't, you know, put any re reward on my pledge because Dave was going to give me one anyway. It's right. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. That's right. Uh, you, Yuki is also is also a backer of the project. Yeah. He yeah. Put in a lot of long hours to, to make this movie happen, and uh, and then 
when we're on Kickstarter, he turns right back around and throws down some cold hard cash. And Thank then, you. when this film becomes a hit, uh, cold you know cold hard cash actually flows back to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do Kickstarter was also so that we can kind of like press our own DVDs, and then we'd have plenty for the cast and crew. Yeah, you know, it's not like we have to tell them go buy it for. Dollars online or something. That is always a problem mm-hmm. when somebody else is your distributor. So, man, well, um, uh, Shioti, do you do you do you wanna do you wanna sit down and <laughs> say more? Are you? Like, are you too tired? Are you, are you about ready to go home? You <laughs> think, or are you you wanna stick around a little longer? I think so. Yeah. Well, you wanna you wanna say goodbye to all the viewers yeah. first before you go? Here, you you, you two sit in and uh, can obviously I, can you have just water. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like water or something. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Can't stay up that long. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, well, why don't you guys? What time is your game? It's about four o'clock, four p.m. There, there are a lot of Japanese viewers watching. So, how about you guys? Uh, I don't want to keep you up too late. So, yeah, how about you guys just give all the Japanese viewers a, a farewell message, and then uh, we'll wrap things up for you guys. For the next. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be talking Japanese for yeah. for Japanese viewers, and then Shiori Tan. そして一人になる。ああ。何人ぐらい日本人の人がいらっしゃるんだろう。Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. Uh, Ivan, real right. Oh, cool. His, his wife is Japanese, so about her right? そして、何を喋ったらいいかわかんないんですけど。あ、教師修行所にいるお姉ちゃんから手紙が届くっていうすごくエモーショナルシーンらしいんで、その手紙に書いてあること<笑> <笑>でもこれは私にとってとても大事な手紙で終わっちゃうことがありますね。見られないから。Let me uh, <笑> I got, I, I, got, I received a letter from Okay, so uh, someone sent her uh, in, a, in a film. Someone sent her a letter from the uh, the you know the uh, Japanese internet internet camp in California. Uh, in California, oh, yeah. And that letter was supposed to be you know, something so precious for the character. And when she opened it in the scene, it was written in Chinese. <laughs> so she her um, you know. Uh, she was trying to concentrate in the scene as a character, but everything was written in Chinese, so it uh, um, it was kind of difficult for her to, uh, to to you know stay in the character because of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so it was a pro- it was a proper prop letter that was written in the long in the wrong language. It was. I I think I think they thought it's a old Japanese. Well, it was actually Chinese because I couldn't understand some of the words, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's sad, like but tiny, uh, tiny little things. Uh, a lot of time, you know, 
that so many people uh, don't know the difference between Japanese and Chinese when it's written. Like, they can't tell. And, um, yeah, that happens a lot, actually. Or, or they know, you know, they have to translate in Japanese, but they use Google Translation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How do I know? So does that not yeah. work at all? Um, it's so weird. It's weird. <laughs> like, I can tell if they use you, Google you, Translation you, or not. You feel like you're <laughs> talking what? to a computer, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, uh, you know when when I played a scientist role, I had a, a name tag, and everything was supposed to be written in Japanese. Mm. Uh, but because the the prop maker used a Google translation, um, <laughs> <laughs> instead of uh, my, my you know in the field that my character was studying was uh, supposed to be medicine, but instead uh, they translated into uh, drug. Just just do the just letter say drug. Oh. And, and uh, um, uh, <laughs> oh, what else? My uh, my my name of the character in the name tag was written in Japanese, but what's written there was June Sasako language. <laughs> that was my name on the name tag. <laughs> Jun Sasako language. Was it going to be blurred out so you don't have to see notes? Probably not, but I could see it. Wow. But did you, did you tell them, like, this is... They, you know, they, they couldn't change. It, but I, you know, I didn't see that oh. problem until I got up to the set. So, you know, yes. by the time I saw it, it was just too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, some, well, so many times when I'm on set, I'm... Like, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell them or not. Like, how much authenticity they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But I'm Japanese, and if something is wrong to um, me, I mean, like, I'm from Japan, and I, when something is wrong, it's, I feel like I have to tell them. But sometimes I'm not sure if this is actor's job. It is definitely, it's definitely... I don't want you to cross the border. It's, 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 it's the other job. job. As a Japanese person, you should treat you know. It's <laughs> definitely not, you know, an actor's job um, in reality. But, uh, uh, you know, we have to correct some parts of it. Um, mm. Yeah, because of, you know, just for Japanese audience who's going to be see the film, uh, see the, the 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 you know product. I mean, the pro the film or TV, mm -hmm. and also for Amer for American audience who sees it because um, whatever we play in the film or TV is going to be um, implanted into their subconscious. That's true. And then that's going to be their Japanese uh, character or culture in their subconscious. Mm. And uh, and our roles are normally um, created by those subconscious in the writers. Mm -hmm. And and if the if the writer thinks Japanese in one way, he's going to write in that way. Mm. <laughs> so uh, we. Um, our job is to change the subconscious to uh, to to what Japanese truly is, but it it doesn't change, you know, like that. It takes time. It takes time. Uh, but you know, but it's getting better. It's getting better mm. from ten years ago. I'm sure it's going to get way, you know, much better in the next ten years. I'm very optimistic. I was surprised when I first saw the script of Man from Reno because the translation was really good. I was. Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> but, like, it, was friend, it, was, it was a bunch of people. Yeah. Actually, my friend uh, Mai San, who I just gave a shout out, was uh, one of the translators. I really thought, like, how can I say? I was. Super happy when I saw it. 
because like there's so many misunderstandings going on. Like, not all Asian the same. <laughs> yeah. But um, I can definitely tell that the person who translated or a person who wrote the script and everybody in this production knows and appreciate the culture and it's I was happy really you never hear those kind of things on set because everyone Everybody's there's so, so much yeah. chaos that's <laughs> true yeah. that's cool it's kind of rare to see and work with somebody who really appreciate culture. <laughs> and all of the props, the Japanese language props, like the Japanese books and the newspaper clippings, the Japanese news clippings were We had those designed, designed in Japan. Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. actually pretty impressed by the design of the of the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wasn't that? Uh, 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 written by um, <laughs> the characters Aki Aki Akahori. Aki Akahori. You know who did the design of the books? Was the same guy who oh, yeah? designed this. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, really? And then, sort of shout out to Miwa san who designed the White on Rice DVD as well as all the prop books in uh, in Man from Reno. Arigatou mm -hmm. Miwa san. Actually, it was one of the best uh, props I've seen in American uh, productions. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because. <laughs> Yeah, Dave is pretty amazing. You know, he can direct both in both languages. It's actually yes. Yeah, it's pretty uh, uh, awesome. Awesome. I've seen only uh, you know only few directors can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is one of those few directors in Hollywood uh, who can direct in Japanese and who's eager to cast Asian actors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's pretty, you know, big for us because there aren't much, you know, roles out there for Asian actors. Mm. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, hey, thanks so much for coming. I mean, if, if you guys want to stay longer, you're welcome to. But I know that you, you guys have been here for hours now, and uh, so I don't want to like keep you past your bedtime or anything. I wonder why no, no Japanese people are asking questions in Japanese. I think. I haven't seen any Japanese. Like a couple of hours ago, you we had a lot of Japanese people online. The some messages. Of the, some of the but. Japanese people who we were thinking in Japanese, I saw them posting on Facebook in English. So hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should talk and answer some questions uh, for yeah. Japanese people, people so that. Uh, we're getting dinner at this hour. I don't know. It's like 4 p.m. In uh, on Sunday. Is mm. it? Yeah, that does us for something. Well, we can we can certainly always do this again, you know, with more advanced notice and uh, and then like just organize like a formal Q and A type of thing. I'm kind of thinking. I mean, this Kickstarter thing has has been great, and I'm actually thinking of continuing like this webcast thing. Not always doing 24 well, hours. Yeah, update your Kickstarter backer so it can be a backer only. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, bite them wrong. Update them on what's going on. Oh, how's Tuesday uh, now? So let's see what we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, 45,886. Wow. Now we're getting close to 46. We're getting very close to 46. Okay. Wow, thank you so much, everybody. It's only 114 on the way. Yay! Everyone, thank you so much for uh, so much. listening to this, uh, listening and watching to this uh, live streaming. Uh, I'll, um, Dave still has how many hours? Uh, I've got 13 hours. Or, 13. I've, I've got wishful thinking. I have more than that. I have uh, 15 hours to go. 15, 15 hours. hours. Okay, yeah. But thanks. I'll be okay. I'll be good. I'll be thanks good. to your uh, generous support, uh, we are three thousand and six hundred dollars away. Is that right? Uh, uh, four four thousand one hundred and fourteen. Four thousand and one hundred and fourteen. Fourteen dollars away from completing the pledge. That's 
Newspaper, it's it's different, of course. Yeah, it's, uh, it's its know, own language. Yeah. It's not everyday thing. It's uh, and also like um, especially actually when I play a role of scientists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or doctors, it's it's not even English. Yeah, you know, hemorrhage is definitely not English <laughs> word. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like um, uh, pneumo or you know uh, what's uh, there's so many borrowed words in English, just like there are in Japanese. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's a lot of Greeks and Latins and stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. Anyway, um, thanks, thanks so much. These, uh, I, I'm still, I'm gonna keep going, but we're gonna let uh, our two wonderful and talented actors say good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Shiori's hand right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, thank you so much for thank you, thank you so for much so being much. part of the movie and for uh, thank pledging. Thank you so much. Uh, please, that's not the address of Kickstarter. I was gonna do please visit here, but there that's you. actually Hold just on. a Twitter. Yeah, that's account. a Twitter. And the Kickstarter address is at the bottom. So go to Kickstarter, search Ooh, for Man for Reno. We haven't Hold done a there. we haven't done a mass share in a while. So everybody who's still watching. If you could uh, tweet out that the the project link, the man from Reno, or tell people to check it out. That it's something that's worth backing. We're so close to to making our goal and, and making this movie a reality. You know, the more money that we get, the the more polish we can put on this thing. So, thanks so much, guys. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking to them. They're, they're gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to them. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, guys. Thanks so much for coming in. Good luck. Just, uh, one quick hug break, and I'll I'll be right back. Thanks so much. Come on, you gotta stay there. Come on. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, you going to? I'm sorry. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank 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 you.
We're back, and uh, straight ahead of the light. Okay. It's me. Oh, the light uh, is So, um, oh, no way. here's a. Uh, here's where this um, this 24-hour thing is going to get interesting because uh, the whole time we've been doing this Kickstarter campaign, I've also been working on the the film itself, on editing it and getting it closer and closer to these final completing steps. All, all the money that we're raising for from Kickstarter goes to things like the sound, the color, the special effects. Believe it or not, even though this is a little indie movie, we have over 60 digital effect shots that we have to do. Um, but none of that stuff, the movie's not going to be ready to do any of the, the steps until it's all fully edited all the way through. Editing is as much a part of the storytelling process as shooting is. You know, it's, it's really where you take all the ingredients and put them in the right order and, and make sure that uh, the story makes sense. There's a lot of playing around with the footage and, um, you know, sometimes you, you take uh, something that's scripted in one order ends up being in a totally different order or, or shots that you shot in one order end up being in a totally different place in the movie. Um, and that's kind of what the what the uh, magic of editing is all about. So I'm going to bring in my my co-editor on the movie, Mr. Sean. Uh-oh. I don't know if we are actually... There we go. And... Uh, he and I are going to, we're going to try to get some work done tonight on the movie and also tell you periodically what we're doing, what we're thinking about, or what we're, what we're working on without giving anything away about the movie, but uh, yeah, we're just going to work on the editing for a little while and uh, see how it goes. We are now, we are now nine hours and 53 minutes into this 24-hour telethon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Even after 10 hours, we are we still have people watching, so that's that's really nice. Sean, how's it going, dude? Hey, I've been watching. Are you serious? Oh man, that's awesome. I haven't logged as many hours as you, but yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, good. Thanks, man. How are how are you holding up in uh, San Francisco? Great, it's Sweet. wonderful right now. Got a cool breeze coming in through the window. Oh man, I wish I had a cool breeze coming in through the window. Ah, uh -huh. that sounds pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, what do you think? Are you you uh, still experimenting with that Tokyo section? Yeah, I actually rendered out something for you to check out earlier today, but it was while you're in the middle of this. Oh, so, okay. Uh, is it on the Dropbox? It is. Yeah. But, okay, I'm gonna check it out right now then. Yeah. I, I won't. I won't. Turn the audio off. Yeah. yeah. Are we not gonna spoil things here? We're gonna try not to spoil things, but you know, we're all, we're all, uh, we're all friends here. I don't know. I don't know what that even means in this context. Okay. So, everybody, uh, Sean has been working hard on a section that's early on in the movie, and uh, he just dropboxed me some files that I'm going to watch. I don't want to spoil the movie for you, so I'm not going to show you what he's been what he's been working on. But you can watch my reaction to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious to see that too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much you filter your reactions generally, so. Uh, I usually. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I do. All right, so that's downloading. Sweet. So, Sean is a. Uh, Sean is one awesome filmmaker. You're like a 24/7 guy. Like Lately, yeah, it's been a lot of that. Yeah, does he ever sleep? I I don't think you ever sleep. Rarely. 
Uh, I mean, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm not that impressed by you doing this. I mean, it's a big deal. A lot of people do that. Yeah, I'm. I, I people people got to understand that like I'm the kind of guy who I don't get a, if I don't get at least twelve hours of sleep, I'm grumpy like all month. Oh man. Wait, so this has been you've been saying like you're doing this, but it's kind of a two person operation, right? Well, my my is gonna is she's is, gonna sleep. Sleep, yeah, cause she she starts a new job on Monday morning, and also one of us has to uh, you know be able to be lucid and drive and stuff right. tomorrow. So yeah, yeah, I I, I can I, I can hopefully after it's over just go to sleep for a while and stuff. So. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So I'm downloading some files. Oh, here we go. All right. So uh, I'm watching a new cut of a scene that that Sean did for me. I feel like all our conversation here. It's like there's pictures going on you're not seeing. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This is not this is not a very nice thing to do, to people. But you know, we got stuff to do. Chief, <laughs> そんなことあったりするんでしょうか。Same thing from there on out, just to feel okay. it. Yeah. Watch it now. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think, uh, yeah, I watched it again a, a couple times, but it definitely feels, uh, I feel like I'm getting the same information without as much of, mm. you know. There's a, there's a couple things I'm trying to do really on there that I wanted to carry through, but I just don't know if the footage is there since it's not really shot for it, but, mm. um, are you talking about the the uh, the flashes, flash thing? That's that's the one thing I'm not so sure about because I I really mm -hmm. like the uh, I really like that we don't see her res her response her mm -hmm. response using anything, but um, I don't know. There's something about just holding on that one thing that I I I do like what you did, but I'm not quite sure I I want to. Let me watch it again. Yeah. No, I'm just like trying to follow the missing nouns. We need like a code language. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The missing nouns. <laughs> <laughs> the thing to the thing. I I I I I, I like the flash. Uh, the flash cuts at the beginning, mm. but it feels a little bit like too much like we're trying to get people's attention. Mm. I, I don't know if we need that. I did like the cut back to the flashes after he asked the question, though. That was mm. There is something about it, though. Yeah. 
There is to a certain extent the, the whole. I'm so used to seeing it the other way that it might take a lot more time. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you think taking her lines out there kind of brings us in a little bit better? Or what's your thought? Um, I, I do think so. The concern I have a little bit is the question that she's specifically not answering maybe becomes more important. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, in the, the version for where she does answer, like, she's playful with it in a way, but this way where she's not answering kind of blows it up in this direction that the movie's not really about. So that's that's my main concern with that. But I do think that as far as the flow through the section, especially into the following sequence, mm -hmm. like where she goes after that, um, watching that through all together feels smoother to me for sure. Like eliminating, just trying to make this sequence here a little less structured as far as these mini scenes, just trying to let them. It's like there's, there's a certain amount of information that we want to get across, but it, it almost feels better getting it across with a, with a mood rather than hearing her actually say it out loud. In a way. Right. Um, I don't know. I definitely didn't miss all those lines, that's for sure. Mm hmm found myself, when I was watching it, having to think about, what is it that you said right there again? Um, and by the way, if anybody's watching, um, oh, and it looks like there are a bunch of people watching. So we got, we got a call. Yeah. Someone's on Oh, Hey, Masami, how's it going? It's like in Wayne's World when Garth's all alone on the stage. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Mr. Masami Kosaka, who's uh, one of the one of the actors in in uh, Man from Reno, he plays a character named in the script as the long-haired man, and then later you learn his name is Tatsuji Ono. Um, is on the, is on with us right now. Welcome, Masami. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I don't want to bother your ass right now. Well, if you if you want to come over and be on the show tomorrow, you're welcome to come by anytime before three. Because <laughs> I'm going to be going for another. I got another okay. 14 hours. I I love your caps. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, man. Good luck. I support you all the way, 100%. Oh, thanks so much, man. It sure is great to hear right. from you. Yeah. I'm so, you know, like, happy to hear that, you know, we're so close to our goal. We're getting... We are so close. We are so close. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, hey, thanks for calling in, Mazzano. Okay, Alright, thanks, buddy. We'll see ya. I'm really impressed how much of the cast has shown up. Oh, yeah, no, everybody's been, uh, man, you, you throw a party and, and everybody definitely, is, I mean, every, everybody's been so uh, supportive and excited about this movie, and, uh, and all the all the Kickstarter backers out there who have turned today into a miracle day in uh, in our Kickstarter campaign, I salute you. I salute you. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Get getting loopy. Yeah. Well, things are. I think things are just going to keep getting crazier. From, uh, um, I tell you, I did a 24-hour Kickstarter. No. Like, the entirety of the Kickstarter is 24 hours. What What was your goal? Uh, it was just 5,000. Just uh, 5,000. That's, that's pretty... We, yeah. we, that's pretty big for one day. Yeah. I'm having a little deja vu though, like watching this. Like even though your goal is not at the end of this this marathon. Yeah. Still see this these doldrums here, these 
these hours. Except you've got the Japanese audience. I did not have that. Oh yeah. Well, I think they are. Uh, I think the Japanese audience is out to lunch or dinner now. I don't mean out to lunch. Like I, I think that. Uh, I think we're entering the true witching hour when it's right. day. You know, like once you and I finish our work. It's gonna be Dave talking to himself. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'll probably put on some videos from a playlist and go and take a shower at some point because I feel like so gross. But uh, yeah, oh, it's all good. You didn't get juggling yet? No, I haven't tried. I was gonna. Yeah, there. Were, I had a lot of a lot of plans that. I didn't quite get around to. I was going to learn how to juggle on the air. I was going to give myself a mullet on the air. Um, That's got to happen still, right? Yeah, That's the goal. Well, stretch goal. <laughs> stretch goal. A mullet. Right. Well, if we do a mullet stretch goal, maybe. I'll, I'll do a mullet for another, for some more cold, hard cash. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, mm. But yeah, well, I I like this. I feel like this is I feel like this scene is progress. Yeah, I think you can still keep going in that direction. Um, like there's definitely that that end conversation to that sequence that happens. That I mean, most of the information there is fairly useful as far as setting up where this character is at at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's um. There's something about the performance of the f of the fan that feels better without the you know the added weight of having to kind of. I mean, because really, when it comes down to it, the point of that conversation is to like. To note that how fast she works, you know, that mm -hmm. she's like one of these authors that's pumping out like five, six books a year. Or that's the crucial information there, at least for me. I don't know if the talking about luck really. I don't. Because it's sort of a it's sort of a thread in the movie, but at the same time, it's not something that uh, I feel like needs to be set up this early necessarily. Yeah. And the way that it's echoed very late in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just well, it's, it's, it's like that's like a that's like a refrain from something that happens earlier on in the movie, but it does it doesn't necessarily have to be like the one two three thing, you know. It can mm. be it can be just two of them. <laughs> By the way, if anybody's tuning in and has any any uh, any questions, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to answer them. Let me check and see if there are any questions. Nope. <laughs> what what is our plan here? We we're actually actively working for the most boring segment of this so far. <laughs> yeah, dude. What, we're, what is your thought? Our, my thought is uh well, um, what else do we have to talk about besides that scene? I guess we need to... I haven't really done anything on that other scene that I said I was going to work on. I've been kickstarting. Mm -hmm. But um, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss? Yeah, it's pretty spoilery. Uh, how, how spoilery are we talking? Uh, like... The okay, like the big third act space. I don't know. Um, okay, like Bruce Willis dead in Sixth Sense type spoilery. Whoa! <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, man. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, no, no. There was there was a scene that you had pointed out that needed to be worked on a bit. Oh, I know what scene you're talking about. Yeah. Um, that was kind of like next on my list, but I mean, I still don't feel like I'm all the way through pushing around that thing you just watched either. 
Okay. Yeah, keep going on it. I, I definitely feel like, uh, um, I don't know, the avenue you're taking with it is is worth, you know, mm. staying on, for sure. It was mostly those moments at the start, obviously, that are very stylistically different that yeah. I wanted to kind of have you see... They're very. Uh, well, it feels it feels very slick uh, mm-hmm. in that part, and I'm I'm not sure if it's, you know, because I, I I like it if if I didn't know what was coming before and after, but I kind of feel mm-hmm. like it kind of probably takes us too much into snazzle dazzle razzle territory yeah. where we're like trying to. Because I, I, I'm not worried about keeping people's attention in this part. I'm okay with kind of owning the slowness, but right. I don't, um, you know, my, my problem with this whole section is just kind of like, are we giving unnecessary information or is it really more mood that we need to be uh, establishing? You know? mm. Is it char- character stuff that we can that we can hit pretty softly without having to hammer it home every step of the way. Yes. Word. <laughs> that makes sense. Don't look at me. I'm just the director. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I forgot. We I remember we divided up those other two scenes. Were you going to do the epilogue and I was going to do the whole you know, you know what happens to you know who section? Is that what we're doing? Uh, that sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for, yeah, the epilogue I definitely haven't revisited since that last time through. Okay, cool. Um, well, <laughs> was there anything? I know that you had worked with it. Was there anything that you had really decided on in that last pass through? No, you know, I I started toying with it a little bit. I toyed mm-hmm. with. Like, I toyed with some of Rich's ideas of doing like a fractured timeline where the bar scene was interspersed without throughout the first part of the of the other thing. Right. Um, but I never I never really got down to it. I kind of feel like maybe I need to shoot the newscaster side of things because yeah. I I got some B roll that I was gonna shoot or that I was gonna have shot for that and. Uh, you know, like, because if, if it's like a Dateline or 2020 type of story that they're watching on that TV, mm-hmm. um, you know how those shows, those shows always have, like, B-roll, like, in this case, if they're talking about a book being a huge bestseller, you'd see, like, the conveyor belt with the books going by and the book printing <laughs> like, uh-huh. boxes of books being boxed up, so... I was thinking of shooting some of that stuff, like you know, 1080i, just on, just straight up video style, and uh, and um, and there's also we we're also gonna have some guys in Japan shoot some B-roll of uh, people reading the book, and stuff, mm-hmm. Japanese version of the book. Uh, to kind of, I don't know if we've really sold this whole J.D. Salinger idea. Right. Right. Um, and so that's that's kind of I I I don't know if like the uh, editing if if it's if the edit is never gonna well I know that it's never gonna come together until we have you know some of those little little tiny extra pieces but I at the same at the same time I don't feel like I have a real an exactly concrete idea of how that scene should go, stuff like that. Oh, we we have we have some we have some questions. Oh, yes. that's awesome. Firstly, a uh, friend, our friend Dylan Nelson, who is a friend of JD, pledged. Whoa, Dylan Nelson, Dylan Nelson, a whole throwing hurt. throwing down cold hard cash. Thank you. <laughs> filmmakers supporting filmmakers. Thank you so much, Dylan. I really appreciate that. Wow. And, uh, awesome. So, question is, 
What's your process working on the edit? Give it to the editor and see where it goes. Explain a little bit, or follow the, the. Do you explain to the editor, or do you, or does the editor follow the script? That is an excellent question. What is the process that we've been following on this movie? Um, well, I think that uh, I'm gonna I'm going to recline for get comfy. Yeah. Uh, um, with this movie, I had the luxury of having Sean come in while the movie was still being shot. So from the very first day, you know, as soon as the day of shooting was done, we'd take Sean a hard drive and he would stay up all night working on it. And I wouldn't really tell him what to do with it unless there was something real specific. i just kind of see what he does. And uh, then after that, it's just like a process of... So give and take, uh, you know, like he'll he'll have an idea about something. Um, I'll have an idea about something. Uh, the thing that I really like working about Sean is I can say, "Hey, I have this idea. You want to try it?" Because sometimes I'll have ideas that I don't know how to execute, which is um, which is actually sort of how I would define the role of the director in a movie in a lot of ways, because in the same way that an orchestra conductor may not know exactly how to play a bassoon, at least he still can tell a bassoon player what he wants from them. And uh, so, uh, where, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the editing process. So, um... So yeah, Sean, Sean was working on it while we were shooting, and then we wrapped, and I w worked on it a little bit with an editor named Yasu Inoue in New York, uh, who's a native Japanese speaker, and, and he helped piece together a lot of the, uh, the Japanese language scenes that were still um, not quite there yet. Originally, Sean was just going to be on for the San Francisco portion of the shoot, since he's a San Francisco dude. But uh, you know, we had such I had such a good time working with him that uh, and I felt like we were really I felt like between all the other things that I needed to do to finish this movie, um, I wanted to make sure that there was somebody else uh, who was able to pay significant attention to the editing, somebody whose judgment I trusted and whose ideas I liked and everything. Um, because all, all the stuff like the Kickstarter as well as the kind of things that a post-production supervisor might usually handle, like the visual effects, the sound, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that kind of stuff takes away from your actual time just sitting at the computer and editing. And so having somebody who I could kind of play tag team with, um, all that kind of stuff was another reason that, you know, even after the shoot, we kept working with Sean. So to answer your question, it's, it's just kind of, uh, well, Sean, <laughs> what would you say our process has been? Uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely described the timeline well there, as it looks like you're drifting off to sleep almost. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. We still, we still have uh, 15 people to entertain. That's amazing. You can engage. That is. It is. I want to give uh, you guys a hand. See, I mean, Dave has really been trying to have me look at specific sections that need work here and there. And, I mean, when he asked me to come back on and help out at this stage, uh, like I told him, like, yeah, I'm totally open to try out whatever, if I spend a day on something and he throws it all out, it's totally fine. That's the process we're working through. And uh, it's been much kinder than that in general about uh, letting some things stay in there. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're like synced up on Dropbox and can exchange project files and we'll render out smaller portions of the film at times to see what each other is working on, and uh, yeah, it's the magic of the internet. I'm in San Francisco all the time, and Dave's moving around a lot, but we're still able to uh, sync up and be looking at the same project when we need to.
Truly. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, it's funny. E- editing, editing back in the day when you had to edit on physical film, having the kind of collaboration that Sean and I have had would be physically and economically impossible because you'd have to have an exact copy of the work print of all the pieces of film and everything. I mean, it used to be that editing was, you know, not only a storytelling job, it was a, it was a highly physical job, you know, they're just to, to make a cut and everything would, is a, a lot of time spent actually making physical cuts in the film and splices and all that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's sort of an awesome era of movie making that we live in for, um, you know, there's definitely things that are not so awesome about it, but creatively, it's like, man, you know, he and I are in different cities, yet I'm able to virtually instantaneously view whatever he's doing and, and vice versa. So if I'm in the middle, if it's the middle of the night and I have a good, I- and I have like an idea that I think is good, I hop on the computer and work on it and then like, and then all I do is just send him an email like, hey, yo, check out the, the thing that I just did. Uh, and tell me what you think, and it's like instantaneous feedback. Yeah. Blake Santiago. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What's up? Oh, now he just said hi. I don't know if he's yelling or not. Blake Santiago, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Um, any any other questions coming in? Mm, Julie's watching. Hey Julie, I hope you're watching when I gave you a shout out earlier on in the evening. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Ugh, time to sit up. I start laying down now, and uh, there's gonna be trouble because I'm not even halfway through this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm actually not that worried about the tiredness. The thing I'm worried about is my is sitting on the couch. Because I can already feel my back starting to feel like all crazy. Should stand. All right. Merge it. Oh. Very intimidating. I look like I'm. I look like Shaq. (laughs) Oh. So, what? What would you say? What are the I mean, we definitely have some. I, I there's definitely some decisions to make about uh, how certain things are going to play in this movie. Um, but to answer, but to answer your question from before, Sean, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I I have that sequence all mapped out exactly how I want it. I I haven't uh, I haven't hit on that one idea that's going to bring it all together. I know it's going to come though. Or maybe it'll maybe it'll come from you. I'll try. Um, in this last version that you were working on, it looks like you dropped the temp score that was in there. Do you want to do that because you felt like it was kind of going in the wrong direction? Oh, are, are you talking about the temp score for the thing that we don't talk about? Talk happens to the person that we... No, I'm talking about the epilogue. The epilogue. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I just dropped the music just to, to be able to edit it. Use, okay. use. I, I like the music. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure if it should start like right off of it, because it's like we're coming from a section that I feel like is going to be pretty musically heavy. And right. last... Sing that last time through. Yeah, it definitely was in the, in the last century. I felt like that temp cue you put in worked pretty good. A long time ago, I mean, when when we first did that sequence, where Pepe comes into the hotel room and is like walking around, mm-hmm. I kind of I I kind of had pictured that playing like pretty much silent. Like you just hear mm-hmm. the wind coming in through the windows and mm-hmm. and uh, but now I've kind of. I kind of made peace with the fact that it, you know, I think it kind of needs something there just because, uh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like that moment. It's not really a 
quiet moment where where it is with the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. But maybe when we come back in for the epilogue, then it's uh, it's quite possible that maybe we need a few moments of silence where we're just where we're just hearing the sounds and stuff like that before we start assaulting the audience with music again. Right. Uh, That's a good thought. It definitely wasn't working as it was, that transition, for that exact reason you're talking about. Like, there's a score doing one very specific thing and then another right against each other. Yeah, and it was, it was like, different enough that it didn't... Um, it wasn't, like, all to get... You know, it wasn't unified or anything. And, I mean, e even thinking of it just in terms of it being temp score and everything, I, I still couldn't, like... I don't know. I couldn't imagine couching like two two pieces of music, one right after another, right there. Yeah. So I don't know, but I'm not. You know. I mean, I, I I tried a couple different things. I tried cutting straight from like we go to black after you know all the craziness happens, and then. I tried just cutting right to, or just fading right in on the sheriff's office and the deputy walking in with mm. the package, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know. It didn't. That didn't really work either. Like the idea was, I sort of like the idea that it's like really, really, that it's just really, really direct and dry until that moment. Because mm -hmm. we we haven't really had many sort of. What, what I'd call like slice of life documentary moments, and I don't mean the, like documentary style, but just where we're just kind of like we're just watching yeah. couple things happen. You know? and, yeah. um, I do think there's it might be worthwhile questioning that kind of three step arc that happens there, because currently it's the it's the response to what happens then. Shifting away from that, but then back into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's definitely like three steps that happen, and maybe eliminating one, maybe that would throw it off balance. But I'm guessing like that's what the instinct was, trying to go directly to the sheriff's office, like get rid of those other two beats and just go straight through into the rest of the film. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm kind of torn because a lot of those. Yeah, that was that was definitely my thought. Mm. The thing that I, I am feeling torn about is, um, like, all, all those sort of moments of reflection where we're just kind of watching him do his thing are, they, you know, they really draw me in for some reason, but I'm not sure that they draw me in in the right direction, if that makes sense. It, it definitely works nicely as an epilogue, but it doesn't, Necessarily work for like a really active epilogue, if that, if that makes sense. You know, yeah. like I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want the audience to feel like there's like that I'm toying around with them or or, or anything like that. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. I did. I did try a version where I took out all of those kind of day in the life things. Mm -hmm. huh. That that was a separate version than the one that goes directly into the the package thing arriving. Yeah, that was a that was a separate version. Okay. Yeah, there was like a. Um, I tried a, a couple of different ways to ease us into the sequence. Uh, Mike Lerman had sort of an interesting idea that I played around with a little bit, but still I'm not exactly sure how how I feel about it. Because, like, the, des the design of that whole ending is that we are switching point of views temporarily, you know? Mm -hmm. we're, we're going from one person's point of view to somebody else whose point of view we haven't been in at all. Um, his thought that is, is that maybe that's not the right play. His thought is maybe we stay with the people we've already stayed with and then let the audience figure out what happened as 
as the clues kind of reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. I remember you explaining this more clearly previously when you could say names. <laughs> yeah, when I could say it, when I could, uh, yeah, editing in public is hard. Yeah. Um, it's really for a mystery. Did you, did you, you saw, you remember the version of the epilogue that Rich cut? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, I thought he did something really interesting with, you know, cutting back and forth between what was happening with Pepe's character and then what was happening in that bar. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Well, that's what you were talking about, right? Like, stringing it out through the whole sequence. Yeah. Uh, the barter sequence. Yeah. Oh. It basically, like, you know, having the bar sequence be the present and cutting back to back and forth to mm -hmm. Pepe and, until after everything that happens in Sausalito is over and everything, then the last bit of that bar sequence then becomes just a button on the whole movie. Right. So that we end on this sort of uh, uh, interesting darkly humorous note in a way. Because um, because I think that, you know, Rich's note on that was, was probably right, that we, we sit through this big long epilogue and then the last thing we want to do is then sit through like a video report that's all exposition and then yet another ending. So it's, um, it's a tough one. Yeah. It sounds worth reinvesting in though. Um, I remember when I took, when I did my pass on it, it was definitely pushing away from that, but only just because I was trying something a little different. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, there's a lot I really like about it. Um, I mean, it's all, it's all there. It's all there. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, nobody's ever doubted that it was all there, but I... I don't quite know if we are too much or too little on on certain things. Mm -hmm. We got some questions from the audience. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ask Sean, did they bug you in the middle of the night? Uh, <laughs> Kev, Kev Dog, Kevin Long was asking do you, if I bug you in the middle of the night a lot. No. Oh, no. No. Usually up, though. So it's not like bugging me. Yeah, I'm like a. I've always considered myself a night owl. I mean, my productive hours are between 4 p.m. and like 1 a.m. But uh, I make, I make. Sean makes me look like a. Uh, like a old man. This guy is open. He's like 7-Eleven, man. He's always working. Oxy says, Dave, are you tired yet? Hey, Oxy. I'm glad you're tuning in. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little tired. I'm not going to lie. Um, so we've been broadcasting for 10 hours and 34 minutes. Uh, so that means there's 13 hours and 26 minutes to go in tonight's broadcast. But, you know, I want to thank all the Kickstarter backers who have made this into such a, a great day. It's been a great day for a telethon. And uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to take another break. Um, I'll probably play you guys a video in a couple hours so I can go brush my teeth and take a shower. Um, but... You know, in the meantime, I want to thank you guys for still watching. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that anybody is watching. But according to this, there are 20 people watching. And I want to tell all 20 of you that I love you from the bottom of my heart. All right, so uh, epilogue. Yeah. So um, we're not giving we're not giving anything away. 
Who knows what we're talking about? I don't know. There's been a few times in uh, this discussion where I feel like if I was a big mystery fan mm-hmm. and I like started writing notes down, I'd figure a few things out. Well, let's hope nobody is uh, madly scribbling, scribbling down this thing so that they can... Yeah, you're right. I should probably... Be you, should, you just add it to the lower third. Say, like, no notes. No notes, yeah. No paper, no pens. Yeah. Um, it's not an open book telethon. No note-taking allowed. Um... I want to give a shout out to uh, to Atsuko Okatsuka, the person who just left a comment asking if I was tired. Atsu is actually going to come over and be on the show for the last part of the telethon tomorrow. She and Mike Ott. So, uh, everybody, set your alarm clock so that you can... Uh, Join back in for the final hour. The final countdown where we see if I, in fact, am going to get a mullet. Wait, wait, I, no. This, the, mullet, the mullet is off the table. The mullet is off the table. Or should I bring it back? There's a good thing to discuss. Everybody who's watching, <clears throat> why don't you tell me in the comment section, should I bring back the mullet? the mullet challenge for perhaps a stretch goal. Uh, I mean, you know, should I leave well enough alone or or should I uh, should I end this whole thing with a Kentucky waterfall? Although, I gotta point out, and somebody pointed this out on the broadcast last week, I've already got a pretty good mullet. Like, if I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get myself in the profile here. Like, if I tuck my hair behind my ears, that is a mullet. See? I mean, all I gotta do is just shave here and here, and I've got myself a very, very fine uh, mud flap going on. Hey Sean, do you have any uh, any video entertainment you could put on screen share and share with us? I don't know. Uh, nothing on topic, I don't think. Oh, it doesn't have to be on topic. I just uh, I just want to take a quick break. Yeah. Maybe I can help you somehow. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave Sean in the driver's seat for a few seconds. Yeah. I will be right back. Not this again. It's just going to be the, the people watching count. Just doing this. All the way to zero. And then negative zero. And beyond. Um... Hi. I was referencing it before, and I do often, but the, the moment in Wayne's world, does everyone know what I'm talking about? When Wayne leaves, and Garth's sitting there all alone, I count down to action. Garth says, We're having a good time. Not. That's how I feel right now. Um. That was cool that Kevin Wong is watching, right? Saw that guy yesterday. I promised video content. I'm not providing it. I'm sorry. Man. Um. Oh, here. Yeah, the problem is I don't use this enough to know how to put video content up there. So you're going to have to bear with me. Or everyone just go take a break as well. That also works.
Okay, maybe I'll play you this video. Oh, wait, I hear Dave coming back. I won't. Okay. So I'll play you this music video I made last year that nobody saw. And now, in the middle of the night, a couple people can watch it. Here it comes. Almost. Is it even working? I have no feedback at all, so I don't know if it's working. Is that actually playing on that side, Dave? Nope. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you left that in good hands, clearly. Oh, no, sorry, dude. Didn't mean to leave you holding the bag on that one. No, I couldn't tell if it was playing or not. No, it That's too bad. Yeah. Oh, well. Cool. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, technical director and associate producer and all-around Kickstarter mastermind, Mai Hong, is officially asleep for the night. So I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, manning the uh, the comments. Hey, do you know how to make this? Do you know how to make the the window automatically toggle when we're talking? I don't know what to figure out. Is it not doing that? It it was for a while, and then it stopped. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the opportunity. Hmm? Yeah, it's not coming back to you, huh? Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to I'm going to take the opportunity to thank a couple more Kickstarter backers on air. Got a big big long list of people that I I really want to thank. Holy cow. We're at 45,936. dollars When did that happen? Did somebody pledge while I was in the restroom? What? No, that was Oh man, that's awesome. So we're just uh sixty four dollars away from forty six thousand, which is uh man terrific. Man I can't say enough about how awesome all the, all the backers are. Let me see if I can find where I left off on the list. So Sean, um don't let me, don't let me keep you if you are, uh, if you go to sleep and stuff. But uh, I'm willing to man the fort alone. I don't know how much more editing stuff we can discuss before we start to uh, spill the beans. Spill the beans. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you want to keep going on Tokyo, did you want to take another crack at at um, epilogue, or was I going to do? I can't remember what we said. Um. I guess I was just looking for something to transition to after Tokyo. Okay. So, okay. Um, I don't know how much I'll do tonight, but my tomorrow is owned by this film, so. Oh, okay. That's All a right. fun thing to do. Um. Well. What? 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 Or, or do you feel like you're already cut out on the? Uh, that sequence that we're not going to talk about? The oh. inter intercut sequence? Yeah, I mean, I think the... I feel <laughs> like the big decisions to be made are how much back and forth and where. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll, I don't I'll know about you, but... Yeah. I think, like, the actual content is pretty good, what's in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think so, too. Okay, well, we can touch base about it tomorrow. I can't, I can't exactly remember the other parts that we talked about. You're super muffled. Oh, I am? Oops. Yep, I just threw up the mic. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, dude. Thanks for coming on. I'll leave you to your fate. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thanks. All right, everybody, say good night to Sean. Good night. All right, guys. It's just me now. We are. Uh, we are. How many hours in? We're eleven hours in. Eleven. We are 10 hours and 49 minutes into the broadcast. Um, thanks for tuning in for so long. I really appreciate it. Earlier tonight, I started reading the full list of, of backers. And uh, I want to I wanna get back to that before I get too tired. I'm sorry that the uh, I'm sorry that I'm in such extreme close up. If anybody has any questions, um, I mean you can put them in the comments thing, but I actually can't really see the comments very well because they're on another computer. But maybe you can hit me up on Twitter. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I remember what I was doing now. All right. Let's uh let's see here. All right. 
Okay, I, f I found the place that I left off. I found it. So I'm I'm back on the I'm back on the list, and I want to personally thank every backer so far who's gotten us so close. Guys, I don't know if you realize, but we are 91%. We're only 9% away from reaching the goal. I can't tell you how excited I am and uh, and grateful to all of you for making it happen. So let's talk about all you guys who are making it happen. Backer number 42 is Perry Shen. Perry, I want to thank you, sir. Um, Perry is an awesome actor. And uh, he is really tearing it up on General Hospital right now. He also acted in my film, Surrogate Valentine. Uh, earlier today, I was looking for people to teach me how to juggle, and Perry sent me a video on how to do it. Thanks, Perry. Thanks for throwing down some cold, hard cash so that man from Reno <laughs> could get finished. Next. Number 43 is Stephen Chin. <laughs> Stephen, thanks so much. Once again, another uh, another pack arts movement, Pacific arts movement uh, person coming to the rescue and making Man from Reno happen for me. Thank you. Number 44. Gregory McCausland. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for your generosity. Number 45 is H.P. Mendoza. I've talked a lot about H.P. during this campaign. He's one of the... He is a filmmaker who I admire greatly. And he's also my good friend. He's uh, been such a generous supporter of, of my work in every way. He even read a draft of the Man from Reno script for me and gave me notes. And uh, if any of you, I mean, reading a script for somebody is a big deal. That's like a lot of time that goes into that. I mean, even watching somebody's, like a, watching a rough cut for somebody, that's a big deal. Um, so, man, he's, uh, he's always been so generous with his creative support. Thanks, HP. Number 46 is Mr. Anderson Lay. <laughs> Anderson's the man. Um, he, uh, He's been such an awesome supporter of my films for so long, especially in the film festival world. Um, I actually met Anderson at the world premiere of my very first movie, Big Dreams, Little Tokyo, and then he programmed my second movie, White on Rice, in the Hawaii International Film Festival. And one week later, we opened it in theaters, and Hawaii was the top place that it uh, it was the top market for the movie in the U.S. and uh, man, he's done he's done a, a heck of a lot for for me being able to get these films that I make out there. You know, he's always tub thumping, spreading the word, and this time throwing down cold hard cash. Thanks, Anderson. Sure appreciate it. Number 47, I want to thank Usiyama Kikuko-san. Thank you so much, Kikuko, for uh, throwing down some cold, hard cash. <laughs> i got to stop saying that. Uh, when I say cold, hard cash, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to show how seriously I take the 
sacrifices that everybody is makes to you know contribute to these campaigns. Because I mean, man, that's that's serious, man. To to say to somebody, I believe in what you're doing. I believe in the money, the movie that you're trying to make. So here's some, you know. But they're not just saying it. They're saying it with cold, hard cash. Oh, looks like there are some... Looks like there might be some comments somewhere. Oops. Hold on, guys. Technical difficulties. It's really hard without my hair. I feel bad because... Uh, when she was talking to me when I'm on camera, sometimes I think I sound like I'm like snapping at her, but I didn't mean to. I was just uh, what? Okay, news flash. I just want to welcome two new backers to the project. This is nuts. First of all, I want to welcome Mr. Christian Vuisa. Christian, thanks so much for being for being a backer. Christian is also a, a filmmaker. Man, you know, I, I always, whenever people ask me for advice about fundraising, I'm always telling them, well, I can tell you where not to go. Don't go to other filmmakers because everybody's worried about their own movies. Turns out I was totally wrong, man. There's all these filmmakers throwing down cold hard cash to help me finish up this movie and finish it strong, finish it right the way that it's supposed to be finished and uh, dang I don't I don't I don't even know what to say I'm just uh, flabbergasted at all the all the support that has been pouring in um <laughs> Sorry, I I just saw I thought, saw something funny on Facebook. And okay, I want to welcome the latest newcomer to the the backers club is Ayako Fujitani, what? <laughs> the leading lady, the lead actress of Man from Reno is. Somebody who has already sacrificed so much to make this movie happen is coming in right now during this 24-hour telethon and throwing down cold, hard cash. That deserves a second applause. Wow. Hi, Echo. I should be throwing cold, hard cash your way. Um, but wow, thank you so much. And thanks for... I'm so... Uh, Glad that she came and spent so much time talking to everybody on the broadcast. Hold on, I think there's some comments from over there. Let me make sure. Oh, never mind. No. Uh, sorry, false alarm. False alarm. If any of uh, so when I was younger. When I was like, when I had to stay up all night working on a project, I used to rely on sugar. Like, if you, if you need like a shot of energy, take like a bite of a chocolate bar or a small handful of M&M's. And then, uh, wakes you right up. Now, I'm older. I'm in my 30s, even though I still live like I'm 17. And, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't really work anymore because now I eat a whole bunch of sugar and my body just needs all this energy to process the sugar and so it makes me tired. It doesn't give me any more energy. So, I don't know. But let's see if it works. Hey, it's 2 a.m. I've been going for, I've been broadcasting live on camera for 11 hours watching as friends, new friends from all over the world throw down cold hard cash to make sure <laughs> to make sure that Man from Reno gets finished and uh, I think I think I want to celebrate with a handful of M&M's I don't really 
ich jetzt erspare. Hm. I can feel the energy coursing through my veins. Hmm. Anybody who's watching, if there is anybody watching, can you uh, tweet me at the Dave Boyle? Just uh, it's dark and scary here. All right, here we go. Let's uh, now that we've welcomed our latest backers, Christian Buisa and Aiko Fujitani. Let's um, let's get back to it. Backer number forty-eight, Teresa Christine. Sub T, thanks so much for. Thrown down. <laughs> Teresa is right now working like crazy on Jennifer Pong's movie uh, off in New York. We've she was one of the producers on my last movie, Daylight Savings, and man, she uh, she pulled off some miraculous stuff on that movie. That is for sure. Thanks, T. Number 49, backer number 49, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph Matthew. <laughs> really, appreciate really appreciate it. Number 50, what? Dwayne Anderson, good old Wayne. <laughs> Wayne Lime Produce, well, first of all, let me say a few things about Dwayne. I've known Dwayne now for nine years. Um, when I was making my first film, not Big Green Little Tokyo, but a secret first film that will never be seen by anybody, I really needed to find a cameraman. And for me at the at the time, what I understood cameraman to mean was somebody who owned a camera. And uh, so I... I went to my local college campus and pasted up a bunch of flyers asking for anybody who had a professional quality camcorder to give me a ring and uh, I got one phone call and it was Dwayne Anderson and he was like yeah I got a camera I'll shoot your movie I was like sweet the very first day he shows up, he's got like all these lights, and I was like, holy cow, man, this guy knows what he's doing. He was like, I don't think Dwayne had ever <laughs> like sh shot anything before, but but it was it was pretty rad. Um, so, yeah. And then we've been working together ever since. He produced my debut feature, produced... White on Rice. White on Rice was a tumultuous production. When uh, things were threatening to go south, Dwayne came through with cold hard cash to make sure that we uh, that we made the film. He's been he, he you know he's he's one of my close friends and uh, I want to thank him for for. Uh, Supporting this this campaign. Thanks, Dwayne. Number fifty one is Barry Baz Hatfield. What, Barry? <laughs> so, uh, when I was eighteen, I went to Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, and uh, it was fine, but. I gotta tell you, I did not really feel at home there, and uh, Barry didn't either. And we became really good friends in biology class. I think we were always like uh, trying to chat with girls and stuff like that. 
one time around uh, around Christmas time, we did this really stupid thing where we made these Santa hats that had like a piece of mistletoe hanging right in front of them. We walked around trying to get girls to kiss us. Um, yeah, sorry. Distracted. Somebody tweeted me. Yay, somebody tweeted me. Um, but, uh, yeah, so me and Barry go way back. He went off to New York, and I went to Australia, and then we kept in touch over the years, but didn't really reconnect in earnest until um, a couple years ago, a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, now he's, he's doing his thing. We're both, you know, doing our thing, trying to make it in America. And uh, he's the most personable. Barry can carry on a conversation with anybody. Uh, man, I, I need cue cards. I, I have to write stuff down, like on note cards or anything, or else I'm just, I'm at a loss. But Barry is an exceptionally talented guy, and he's also has a exceptional gift with people. Barry, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for throwing down cold, hard cash. <laughs> to make sure that Man from Reno hits the finish line. Backer number 52 is Tyler Meesum. Oh, man, Tyler. Thank you so much, sir. Tyler is, a, is an awesome filmmaker. He, uh... He directed a great documentary about um, uh, kids affected by polygamy called Sons of Perdition. And uh, I saw that at the Tribeca Film Festival a couple years ago. I was, on the, I was in like the, the line, you know, like the line where they tell you to wait to buy tickets, but there never are any tickets left. But, uh, you know, Tyler hooked me up, man. He saw me in the line, made sure I got in there. Yeah, no, he's he's been an awesome supporter. He's a great friend of Dwayne Anderson's, actually. Thank you, Tyler. Really appreciate it. What? Yasmin Gomez throwing down whole cold hard cash. <laughs> Yasmin is yet another uh, member of the advantageous team. Uh, uh, they are getting ready for their very last day of shooting tomorrow. Well, I guess today. Today is their last day of shooting. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's me. Man, she is, she is awesome. Really, you know, I, I always enjoy talking to her. She's got, the, she's got such a great dry sense of humor, you know, just a smart, awesome, great friend. Yasmin, thanks so much for supporting the film. Really appreciate, really appreciate you throwing down cold, hard cash. <laughs> Let's, uh, oh, oops, almost knocked the computer over. Let's see, uh, I want to thank Jim E., number 54, and Clyde Madison, number 55. And I also want to thank number 56, Aaron Fowler, um, who is a, a, one of one of my most, uh, most active and, and wonderful fans who has become a friend over the years. You know, we actually had never met each other in person until... I think like the 2011 Cleveland International Film Festival, but Aaron, in his capacity as a journalist, had done a lot to make my first two films, uh, you know, kind of catch more of the limelight than they would otherwise. Thank you, Aaron. Really appreciate it. Okay. Ada Tang, thank you so much, Ada. 
Ada is an awesome journalist. She writes for the Asia, uh, Asia Pacific Arts. And uh, I always love seeing her at screenings or whatever. Sometimes we'll be both be seeing the same movie and trade notes on, on uh, so what did you think? No, what did you think? No, what did you think? Ada, thanks for, thanks for throwing down some cold, hard cash so that we can make this movie happen. I also want to thank number 58 and 59, Takashi Sawada and uh, Melanie Ann Griffiths. Thank you both so much. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> number 60, Lancia Wan. Thank you so much, Lancia. Lancia worked on my very first movie, Big Dreams, Little Tokyo. And we've been friends ever since. She's, uh, she's awesome. Lancia, if you're watching, and I sincerely doubt that you are, I want to thank you. Okay. Uh, Jen Ames in San Diego, thank you so much for for not only for pledging, but also for being an extra in the film. And I also want to thank Ishai Seton, backer number 62, fellow filmmaker. Once again, man, filmmakers everywhere. <laughs> to support each other and make sure that these projects happen, you know? I mean, that's what it's all about. It's like, we just got to make sure that all the stuff, that all these good films with potential get out there and happen, you know. Oh man. Uh is is anybody watching? I wonder if everybody left their YouTube channel on and and I'm just like talking to myself. I mean that's cool, you know, that's cool, but if you are watching, if you wouldn't mind like Sending me a quick tweet. Um, that'd be awesome. We're now 11 hours into the, uh, into the 11 hours and 13 minutes into the 24 hour uh, 24 hour telethon. We started the we started the webcast with thirty two thousand dollars, and now we're at over. We're wait. I haven't checked the total in a while. What? You know what? I think I think we hit like some kind of milestone. We're at forty six thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars. That's just, oh man, oh awesome, thanks for leaving comments guys, oh sweet, awesome, yeah, Bobby, Bobby and Andy, thanks for watching, thanks for letting me know that you're watching, you guys are awesome. What was I just talking about? Oh, yeah. So today, if any of you are just tuning in, I am raising money to finish my film, Man from Reno. We started at 3 p.m. this afternoon on Saturday, and we're going until 3 p.m. on Sunday. So that's a 24-hour uh, telethon to make sure that we finish this movie and um, yeah, we started out the evening at like 60 some up percent, 64 percent, and now we're at 91 percent of our goal. And so I'm going through and thanking every backer who pledged, and uh, I'm a little, I'm starting to feel it. I've been on the air for 11 hours and 15 minutes. We're almost halfway through, but there's so many people to thank. Um, 
I, I think that in my crazed and dazed state, I might not be able to do as good a job as I would, but please know that, you know, even with this on-air shout-out, uh, I'll also, you know, be sure to give you guys a shout-out in person and everything. How many people are planning to come to our to the uh, countdown party on Tuesday in LA? I know I'm going. It'd be awesome. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. I got guests coming. I got guests coming. Sorry, guys. I just got a couple, um, couple guests who are going to, they're going to dial in. Yeah. Julie Huang, thanks so much for the tweet. Hang in there, buddy. I can I can hang in there with. Oh, I gotta be careful. I keep doing the fish shaking thing. I'm doing it as like a triumphant, like yeah, type of thing, not like a like angry driver type of thing. Um, I'm gonna invite a couple people to the chat. So Gary Chow and Emily Ting, I just posted invites to you guys to join in on the uh, on the talkathon here. So when it gets to you, just uh, you may have to <gasps> add me to your Google Plus circles, um, and uh, yeah. So hopefully. We're going to have some extra guests coming on in a minute. Guys, I'm just going to take just a, like a really quick break, just like five minutes. Um, I'm not going to fall asleep. I just need to close my eyes for like, for like two seconds, just like two seconds. I don't think that I'm going to fall asleep, but... Um, I'll get. I'm gonna get right back into the. Uh, no, I got. I got. I gotta get up. I gotta wake up. I gotta wake up. <laughs> All right, I can do this. I can do this. I've only got 12 hours and 41 more minutes to go in this 24-hour marathon. I can do that. I can do that. I can do anything. I can do anything. So that's uh. That's um. You know what would be really awesome is if somebody out there was willing to watch all of these broadcasts and then do like some kind of super cut, like the best moments of Dave going bonkers on YouTube. I don't. Oh. Oh. Shiori-chan, arigato. Ima mail ga kita yo. Arigato gozaimasu. Uh, Shiori, who is just here, is watching from home. Thanks so much for driving all this way and then driving all the way back. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. How are we going to do this? Okay. All right. 
While I wait for Gary to pop in, Gary and Emily to pop in, I'm just going to keep going up the, up the list. Number 63 is Drew Sugimoto. Drew? You are a champ, sir. A champion among men. And I sure do appreciate you. Drew is a, an awesome crew member on my previous movie. Sure, sure loved working with him. Uh, next is John R. Strange. Doc Strange. Drawing down. <laughs> Doc is uh, a Dallas-based photographer who I've met at many events. And uh, he's photographed me at many a Q&A at film festivals. Now he's the in-house photographer for the new Alamo Draft House that just opened in Dallas. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Oh, next is Radislav Sharapanov. Thank you so much, sir. He's been a <laughs> he's been an awesome uh, participant in this whole campaign. I want to thank Yuko Matsumuro. Yoko Kawahara. Oh, I especially want to thank uh, Yoko Kawahara. She made a Japanese version of the Kickstarter site so that Japanese fans could understand all the pledges and everything, all that stuff. She and some of her friends put it together. Kawahara-san, arigatou gozaimashita. Hontoni, hontoni o seiwa ninatte masu. Kore kara mo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. I'll have to send her a Twitter shout out as well. Number sixty-eight is Vicky Ho. Vicky. <laughs> Vicky Ho. Oh, Vicky! Vicky's awesome. She uh. She programmed one of my films at a film festival, and we've become friends. I feel bad because I'm always. I'm always like just barely missing her whenever she comes into town, wherever, whenever I am. And one time, Vicky, I want you to know that I feel really lame about this, but I was supposed to hang out with her in Toronto. But while I was there, I was like coming off of an illness, and I was so tired that I like fell asleep and didn't make it out to this. What's that sound? Oh. Sounds like the sprinklers turned on outside. Ha. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, I fell asleep, and I never saw her in Toronto. Vicky, I want you to know that I'm sorry, but I can't wait to see you, and I'm so glad that you're in New York now. Oh, man. Oh. Sorry, guys, lost my window here. I want to thank C.C. Powers Munson, and I really want to thank Deidre S. Williams. Thanks, Deidre. It was great seeing you in Dallas. And I also want to thank number 71, Sean Jelaine. Sean, man, thanks so much, man. Not only are you helping me edit the movie, but coming in, throwing down cold, hard cash. Amazingly, over the past 20 minutes, our viewership seems to have doubled. And I'm really glad that you guys will be able to hear the names of all the people who have supported me so far on this Kickstarter journey. I sure do appreciate it. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, I will do my best not to say or uh, do anything embarrassing uh, during this. Wow, the viewership just keeps going on up. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, let me let's get down to it. James Lucas, thank you very much. Number seventy-two. Kevin Barker, my uh, my uh, 
one of my filmmaking colleagues yet again, another filmmaker, sporting film. You, you guys should check out Kevin's movie that I had a tiny hand in working on. It's called Last Kind Words. It's out on Netflix now. Uh, number 74, June Park, second AD on uh, Man from Reno. Man, once again, once again, <laughs> the crew swooping in to uh, save me from myself. Sure appreciate it, Chris. Uh, number 75, Dan Boyle. Uh, that's my uncle. My uncle Dan Boyle. Thanks, Dan. Man, that's rad. Throwing down cold hard cash for your rotten nephew. Um, oh, number 76 is Susanna Basanti. Thank you so much. Susanna, she has been uh, Susanna has been an awesome participant in my last couple films. She's been uh, she's at, she's acted in my last two movies and also shown up at the at the premiere. And man, she is just a she is a trooper. Oops, oops. Oh, hold on, guys. Sorry. Uh, next up is Tian Do. Uh, I met Tian at the uh, at the Asian Film Festival of Dallas right before we started the um, Kickstarter campaign. She had a film there called Healthy. Justin S. Lee. I also saw Justin at the at the AFFD. Man. Filmmakers, filmmakers, all just showing, showing up to represent and throw down some cold hard cash. That's uh, man, I really appreciate it, guys. Because I know that there's not a whole lot of cold hard cash to be had in, in the film. <laughs> Thanks. Kind of got the hiccups. Um, Kenji Nakao. Jessica Yazbek, uh, Kawama Sadri, and Mike. I want to thank all you guys. I think this is might be my friend Mike Aki. It just says Mike, though. Uh, Jack J. Snow, Andre Zolotovskos. Sorry, I'm butchering some of these names. Um, but thank you so much, guys. Thanks so much for uh, for being a part of part of it. Dariel Hernandez and uh, Richietti, thank you so much. Ben, Scott, Deshanya Reese, Vincent Kukua, Michael Gure, thanks so much. <laughs> and all you guys. Uh, Mike, man, thanks so much for for throwing down. Jose, Dan Clark, Mark David Christensen. Dan Clark, I believe, is Joel Clark, the writer's brother. Throwing down. Mark David Christensen, who acted in uh, both White on Rice and Daily Savings. I hope. Let me see here. I gotta, I gotta sit back a little bit for my. Oh boy, that is not a flattering angle. Uh, that's not so hot either. Ugh. Sorry guys, I just gotta get comfortable here. Yeah, I think the M&Ms were a bad move. But I want to thank Austin Jose for bringing them to me. Austin, now, you're the best. No, they're working. No, 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 they're working.
Bob Gilchrist, David, Abe Foreman Greenwald, Abe. Abe's awesome. Um, Mike Wentz, dude, Mike, thanks so much. Mike Ohata, Mike Ohato, sorry. Yeah. David Lescure, thanks so much. All these very active participants in this crazy campaign, sure do appreciate you guys. Um, Jody Matsumoto. Thanks so much, Jody. Tetsuo Kuramochi, number 102. Tetsuo Kuramochi, I know him. Oh, I just got a message on Facebook. Oh, Win Tran. Oh. I'm uh, doing a little bit of guest coordination here, guys. If uh, sorry for the sorry for the pause. No, 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 no. I didn't fall asleep. Don't worry. I'm I'm awake. I do need to recline for a couple seconds, though. Oh. So what are you guys all up to tonight? How come how come you're how about all oh, y'all tell me uh what you're up to? Why why you're up so late? Cause I know I can't just be for this uh for this twenty four hour telethon. Um shout out to Shioti for still watching. Thank you so much. Shout out to everybody else who's watching. Um, I'm going to have to, re just to give you guys some warning, I'm going to have to do a, um, like a refresh, restart the uh, window because of the four-hour broadcast limit on YouTube. Oh, there's a Facebook message. We might be having a special guest appearance from Mr. Win Tran. tell you guys, I am so excited about this movie. I've never been so excited about anything in my entire life. Sleep. I just closed my eyes for like two seconds. Oh, somebody's tweeting me. Oh. So Julia is working on laying in some subtitles for Dylan's documentary. That's awesome. Julie, my hat's off to you. That's a uh, subtitling is difficult, thankless work. But Dylan is lucky to have you uh, to work on that. That is really awesome. Um, 
What else we got going on here? Oh. Ah. So, you guys want me to tell you the end of Man from Reno, or would you rather find out when you? Cause I'll tell you. I'll tell you now. I'll just have to erase the video later. It's up to you. I'm going to take it by your silence that you do want to hear what the ending is. Nah, that's cool. I'm not going to spell it. I mean, if I spell it, then, you know, I'll lose my soul. I think, uh, so tomorrow morning, we got some more guests coming on. Michael Lerman is going to come on. Um, and uh, yeah, as long as his internet's working. Joel Clark, my co writer, my writing partner, he's going to come on. If you're just now tuning in, <laughs> I'm doing a 24-hour telethon for uh, my film, Man from Reno. It's on Kickstarter.com. If you go to Kickstarter and look up Man from Reno, we got a lot of great stuff going on. A lot of great people are helping me bring this movie to the finish line. Um... I'm going to be thanking, I've thanked the first hundred backers so far. And I'm going to keep thanking more as the telethon goes on. Um, oh, oh no, Anderson. Anderson's on? Oh, dude. Yeah, don't worry, man. I'm not going to fall asleep. Ugh. I'm not going to fall asleep. I got this. I got this, man. I got this. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. All right. All right. Let's get back into it. Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, what time is it in Hawaii? It's like it's like Thursday at like 4 in the afternoon there, right? Or something. I don't, I don't know how these time zones work, man. I never know. Every time I go to Hawaii, it's like I get there, but... It's, uh, and the, the only reason I've gone to Hawaii is because of Anderson Lay bringing my films to Hawaii, programming my films, and now this time when I'm making a film, he comes in and throws down cold, hard cash to make sure that we <laughs> reach the end of this, man. Anderson, I know you're watching, and I want to say thanks. Thanks for all the, the posts. Thanks for you know, all the encouragement over the years. Because I gotta tell you, a lot of people think I'm really crazy for doing what I do. But uh, it's nice to have people who believe in it. So, this is like some David Blaine stunt, but congrats. <laughs> this is worse than David Blaine. This is like some, this is like some Chris Crocker type stunt going on, man. Leave her, leave Brittany alone, like that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, dude, thanks for tuning in. There's a still a surprising number of you watching, for which I'm grateful. Don't go away. We got we got plenty of goodies still, still coming up. Oh, oh man, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh. Uh, so, we set a goal earlier in the evening, it was a very modest goal that has since been smashed and completely blown into smithereens by all the generosity of all of the backers out there who have been watching and chipping in, you know, doing 
doing more than their part, more than their share to make sure that man from Reno gets done. Um, but you know, if if we just keep going, man, and like you know, we're like editing the movie, and then it's gonna it's gonna have like music and stuff, and man. I got the hiccup, sorry. It's going to be beautiful. I got the hiccups. I got the hiccups pretty bad. Okay, they went away. That wasn't so bad. Whew, starting to get a little chilly. When I started out, it was like in the middle of the afternoon, the sun was pouring in here. I hadn't yet, like, gone totally bonkers and off the deep end. But, uh, Man, tomorrow I'm going to be so happy that I'm going to miss everybody who's on here watching watching this telethon. Yeah. I'm going to miss you guys. Yeah. Oh. I'm not going to fall asleep. I'm not falling asleep. I'm just closing my eyes while I talk a little bit from a seated position. I'm just... Yeah. Let's thank another hundred backers. You guys deserve it. Tetsuo Kuramochi. That's where we ended. Tetsuo acts in the film. And here he is now throwing down cold hard cash. Appreciate it, buddy. But don't up your pledge again. Because, I mean, I, I should be... Oh. Uh, Um, next is Shirley Omori. Shirley came to our event in San Diego when we launched the Kickstarter. Thanks so much. Sure appreciate it. Annie Huang. Annie? How's it going? <laughs> HP Mendoza is... <laughs> Sorry, just moving this back a little bit. Here we go. HP Mendoza is uh, is on. Oops, I accidentally invited somebody to the chat who I don't even know. Sorry, HP Vashista, whoever you are. I got open invitations out to a lot of people. If any of them want to join, you know where to find me. Looks like HP is going to join in. HP? Hey, how are you holding up? I'm holding up great, man. Wow, there's nothing on my screen. Really? I can, yeah. see, I can see you. I see the green dot. Oh, it's everything is just loading really slow. <laughs> are, you on your, there you are. are you on your phone or on your computer? On my computer. Oh, I can go on my phone. No, it's nighttime now, so there's no use. But oh, okay. Let's see. Maybe I can just move the computer somewhere where I'm like really lit. I I don't have a cool backdrop this time around. <laughs> Everybody, I want you to give a warm welcome to HP Mendoza. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do that every time you do that. <laughs> Dude, I'm probably going to get a call from the Google people being like, hey, uh, you you have to stop using that applause button because it can only be used so many times in a day. And then <laughs> like, you applause. Hey, HP, just a, a heads up. This um, this broadcast is going to run out in like five minutes. Oh, wow. I'm going to open a, a new one. And oh, so you're doing six four-hour telethons. Yeah, because the, the YouTube, you know, they're cheap with the bandwidth. Right. Stinking YouTube with their four-hour limits. Yeah, man. How are we supposed to do the director's cut of Napoleon? <laughs> yeah, man. Letting me broadcast for free all over the world, but limited it to four hours at a time. Cheapskates. That's highway <laughs> robbery. <laughs> hey, so what did I... Hey, so yeah, we've been like... Um, we had a birthday party that we were kind of hosting. So like... What did we miss? So what what what's happened in the past twelve hours? Well, um, so we uh, we've had a whole bunch of guests on. Um, man, like a, a dude named Mike came over and played guitar. Hiroshi came over. Uh, her, her and Go came on, and then Ayako and uh, and. Um. Yeah, like a whole bunch of people came, and then uh, Yuki Matsuzaki and Shiori Ideta, who were actors in the movie, came over. Nice. But you know, we started out the night with thirty-two, thirty-two thousand, thirty-two thousand dollars in the can, and thirty-six. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. You have what? Four thousand to go. Something like that. Yeah, man. So. I just wanna. I'm sort of flabbergasted. I'm so uh, I'm so grateful to everybody who's been throwing down cold hard cash all night. So wait, how many people have pledged tonight? Uh, at least at at least like twelve. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Well, uh, it's been yeah, it's been nuts, and and Anderson Anderson is watching. Wait, you can see you can see who's watching? Uh, no, but he's been he's been messaging me. Oh, <laughs> is he live texting you like Rich does? No, he's 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 not doing that. Rich, Rich was doing that earlier, but I think he had to go to bed. Um, no, uh, Rich on? No, Rich wasn't Rich wasn't on, but he was um he was watching and and texting. So. Yeah, he he texted me. He's like, "Are you watching this?" And I said, "No, no, I'm at a party right now." But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Anderson says that this is like some kind of David Blaine stunt, but I was saying it's <laughs> more like a Chris Crocker stunt. Chris Croc, who's Chris Crocker? He's the Leave Britney Alone guy. Oh, that's right. Leave her alone. Your song is called "Give Me More" because that's all you want. More, more, more. Leave Britney alone. <laughs> Dude, you just quoted that guy. <laughs> I know. It's like I have a screenplay of his in front of me or something. He's one of those people. I don't. I. I don't know how I. I don't know how I pulled that line up. I. I wonder. That pro. That's probably word for word. Yeah. No. Hey, did Go perform? Yeah, he did. He did. Oh, okay. I'll have to watch it uh, later or some other time. Actually, so wait, wait. When did he perform? It's probably already posted as one of your four-hour uploads. Yeah, it's probably like the first one, maybe. Uh, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so wait, you you have you are planning to go off the air at what time? 3 p.m. Man, that's in 12 hours. Yeah, my internal organs feel kind of funny. Well, internal <laughs> organs generally kind of feel funny. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, twenty four hours is you know it doesn't seem like that long of a time, but then 